Broadcasting from New Braunfels, Texas, home of the historic Green Hall and the best river tubing in America, you're listening to PX1 Sports Radio, where we cover the hottest topics in the sports gaming world and the world of sports entertainment. Here's your host, Mike Peters. Welcome back. We are in the middle of June, only about four days post EA Play. Got a lot of info out there in LA on Madden 18. We're definitely excited about it. We're going to bring you some info today. We have Relly from Madden Universe here with us today. You guys have probably seen him on Twitter and also hanging out with the Sim Standard guys like I do a lot. He's been out there a lot trying to bridge the gap between the competitive and the Sim communities. So he was out there with me at EA Play and we're going to give you our hands-on impression of what we saw with Madden 18. What was your biggest takeaway, uh, the number one thing that you would say um, for Madden 18 that you saw this year? Wow, there's so many. Um, The number one has to be blocking. Um, Just in in both in both areas, the run game and the pass game. Um, the the run game is completely over. Clint Clint Oldenburg, um, for those of you who don't know, I recommend you follow him on Twitter. He designs all the offensive line things in um, Madden, and the pocket looks great. Running looks great. You got crack replace blocking, targeted blocking. It, it's so much that stood out, but. The the first thing that immediately stuck out to me was was blocking. Blocking was definitely Im- improved. And if you guys haven't watched my interview with Clint, um, if you're watching on YouTube, you can find it on there. If not, go to YouTube and search PX1 Sports. He basically said they took a sledgehammer to some things this year and rebuilt it, and they've added some new plays. We were testing out 26 Duel while we were out there. They yes. have 94 Will and 94 Mike. So there's definitely some new running plays from under center, which is going to change it. The big thing for me, and this was kind of uh, created a firestorm, um, the biggest thing that stood out for me was uh, ID the mic. And so people are kind of up in arms about it because they're not really, it doesn't necessarily, it's not perfect, this and that. Clint did a good job of explaining it on a Twitter thread that I had, and a lot of the guys that were up in arms about it kind of let it go. But, you know, it didn't so much affect sim leagues um so much uh because there's rules involved in it but for guys like me that kind of cross pollinate between the two guys like you that are competitive guys um that's a big feature because things like nickel two blitz this year last year the double loop three blitz um hopefully id the mic and slide protection now are gonna be able to adjust or be able to help us eliminate those things it's gonna give us more of a clean gameplay experience you're a little bit more hands-on and tested that stuff a little bit more extensively than i did what was your biggest takeaway on id the mic well id the mic actually it can be it's it's mostly a targeting system and we actually i think when we played we actually tested it versus nickel blitz just to see exactly how it picked it up and just targeting the nickelback who would come in and this is just a basic overload concept so it should come in generally if you don't do something to pick it up we use no slide protection and all we did was id that nickel blitzer um and basically what would happen was the left tackle would kick out pick up the nickel blitzer the defensive end would come through and your running back would pick him up usually cut him to the ground um, now different running backs are better. However, if you use some form of slide protection along with it, it would work a different way, but it would still pick it up. Um, the running back would kick out. Um, I've seen a lot of two to one blocking. I've seen a lot of tango blocking. And now where a lot of that controversy came from was, oh, this is just a targeting system. Well, we actually tested it from from like a regular point of basic um, pass protection. Just from like the, um, the, I think we were in strong eye normal, and basically we brought a safety down in the box, you know, counted two from the weak side. I deed him as the mic and used slide protection along with it, and it worked fine in the normal sense of the way, normal sense as well. So it kind of seems more like a hybrid, but however, in talking to Clint and. Clint has tweeted this out. They're probably going to change the name of it to just spotlighting um, just because people were mad over a technicality. But as as we talked about before, you know, we even seen it in use 
that that heavily or it was public knowledge um it's really hard to put real pass protection into the game right because 99% of people are going to have no idea how to use it and then you're also going to have the issue of they're not only just going to have to learn how to use it from one formation they're going to have to learn how to use it from every different formation they're in, from every different play they're in, from every formation they see on defense, from every shift from the defense. They're going to have to adjust so much. And it would completely... It would be impossible it, for them. It, it, would alienate, it would alienate right. so many people. It's just not fair. So I, I, I think it's great. That's uh, one of the things that drives me crazy is some of these hardcore guys, um, usually sim guys, um, they're just so like, oh, we, this needs to represent real football 100% because I know football and I know this and that. It's got to meet what I expect. And it's like, dude, you're like the top 1% maybe of football knowledge. Top 5% for sure. Like you you have you have to understand that the, the average person is the person that they have to build this to. They can put some higher level things in there, but it's never going to be 100% perfect. Because like you said, the average person is not going to understand it. And that's one of the things that kind of, you know, I think gets a lot of people up in arms about um, competitive and some of the settings that they had. We'll get into that later, um, possibly. But don't don't adjust the game and don't expect the game to be uh, built for, you know, 1% of the game. Because their whole goal is to sell copies and sell my cards. And you're not going to do that if you, if you, if you just complicate yeah. it so much the average person can't understand it. And the other thing is too, like when I've seen a lot of people arguing over what ID the IDing a mic really is, a lot of people literally thought that when you ID a mic, you're literally just pointing out the middle linebacker, right. and they thought they were right. And More I'm like, people thought that than that the that the concept wasn't correct. Yeah, exactly. And that shows how far away they are. I mean, yes, the mic linebacker from a defensive perspective is the middle linebacker, but. From an offensive perspective, it works completely different. Not to mention, in every different scheme, pass protection is different. Different coaches teach it differently. Right. Which is another reason why, yeah, I think Clint pointed that out on Twitter. Like, hey, this is my experience. I played in the NFL. I've gone to clinics. But not everybody teaches it the same way. So you can't you can't put in a system that's 100% perfect for everybody. Um, now, one thing with that, we were on Sim Standard last night. So if you guys haven't checked it out, Sim F Ball Critic. Um, we were on with Millennium OS, Paget Zulu, and we talked a lot about it. Um, you guys can definitely check out their podcast. One thing that came up, and Ikea mentioned this in the chat, and I don't know if you got a chance to test this at all, but that tackle kicks out and that running back comes in to cut block the DN, his point was that most of those DNs are just going to hurdle that running back and get free release to the quarterback. What's your response to um, that? All right. Here's the thing. I tested different teams with it as well when you just id the mic and do nothing else that's when you get the defensive end free and the running back picks him up okay you're going to have to know your personnel because the ratings matter as far as and this goes across both modes um sim and competitive the ratings matter as far as pass protection is concerned with the running backs just as much as they do with the linemen um Devontae Freeman actually did a really good job of cutting them down. So did Le'Veon Bell. Um, other running backs didn't do as good a job holding them up. Um, however, when you combine slide protection along with ID the mic, what would happen would be the, the running back was the person going to the outside to pick up the blitzer. And obviously there will be different slides and different things that we can use to well, do so, that. Well, so let's look at that real quick. So if you just do ID the mic and you ID the nickel blitzer, the tackle is going to kick out and the running back is going to pick up the defensive end. But if exactly. you slide protect to the side of the nickel blitzer? Opposite. Okay, so you would slide protect opposite of the nickel blitzer, but then ID the blitzer on the – on the. so let's exactly. say the blitz is coming from the right. You ID the blitzer on the right, slide protect left, then what happens? then the running back would come out. But you have to you have to remember this too. If your running back's on this opposite side of the formation, you're not going to want to do that. Right, right. You, Everything is going to be formation based and it, it takes a lot more skill to get like as people get more creative, it's going to take more skill from as far as the chess match. Right. Which is what we all really want. You Same want more dive 
You want more diverse schemes. You want this, that, and the third. And if you ID the wrong person and slide the wrong way and say like, say I was running like just a nickel and I just sent a basic defensive back blitz the play before and you picked it up and you thought I was just going to run it again. And then the next play, I drop I drop him into coverage and I blitz my linebacker on the right side of your screen. I'm trying not to get too technical right. either. Um then if you ID that nickel back and you have no slide protection, you don't do anything else, you're getting penalized for that. Right. As you should, because you recognize the play incorrect. So basically the tackle is going to pick up the end, the guard is going to pick up the D tackle, and that right outside linebacker is going to get it, come in free, basically, because you identified the wrong guy. Exactly. Right. Which is good. I mean, that's that's kind of what everybody's been asking for, you know. Let me make the decision on who I who I block, and if I make a mistake then I pay for it. So um, I think that's going to be a huge addition for the sim guys that are listening. I mean, stuff like that, um, you know, better blocking is going to help. ID the mic is going to be huge as far as eliminating a lot of that stuff. Now, another thing that comes up is the coverage. And I know we've tested this out. I tested this out just playing mutt squads. And I don't know if you remember back in the day when you used to do like a superstar mode or something like that, and you would run a route against man coverage. Like it was so easy to beat the AI because they just were programmed to respond yeah. to something specific. I was trying to beat man coverage myself, like running crazy routes, running like <laughs> S routes. I was running around in circles. I'm like, get off of me. And the dude was like glued to me. The CPU guy was glued to me. So they've made a ton of improvements with man coverage. I know the deep zones aren't even finished yet, but they were significantly better in the build that we yeah. played. How is that going to change the game? Not just from a, uh, an every person perspective but like a competitive sense guys that are playing on a higher level um this is also going to apply to sim as well i mean mud squads obviously it's going to be easier to find different ways to exploit it because you have three people versus three people the better people get playing each other you know right. there's going to be they're going to find ways well there's wide receiver um, tools too that i didn't know about that supposedly rex is really good at and can get open but i didn't know what they were but just trying to run yeah. on your own without using those was really hard to get open the the mode was really fun though for everybody and that's something i th thought i wouldn't even touch yeah um too. but as far as let let's start with man coverage i guess me and you actually tested shading mm mhm um, the days of a C route or a corner route just getting wide open every time is gone. Um, as long if you, as you know, shade correctly. If you shade correctly, yes. And even when you don't shade correctly, they don't get. Even if you don't shade at all, they don't get open every single time. Yeah, it's a lot tighter. They're, they're not going to just get that quick tighter. break and be open. If you shade yet. correctly, you're probably getting a pick. Yeah, or at if least they get throw it and knock it down. Yeah, if they throw it at you, you're and you click on and you. Because ball hawk is toned down so much, it's a timing. It's a timing mechanic now. If you time it correctly, a lot of times, if you have the correct ratings threshold, you're probably going to get an interception. Because if you have a higher rated player like a Richard Sherman, but either way, you're mostly going to be in position if you cover correctly. And then also versus formations like bunch. This is another thing that me and you saw. Banjo coverage. Banjo in general is just a lot better. And for those who don't know what Banjo is, it's essentially when you see like um, Seattle running their cover one against a bunch formation, you'll see the that Richard Sherman is backed off and to the right outside shoulder a couple yard a couple yards off the right outside shoulder of the outside receiver on that side. And you'd have another defensive back over the top of the middle receiver and another defensive back to the inside of the tight end. And essentially, they would. there's rules as to who takes who based on which direction their route breaks. And Banjo was working great. However, if you call cover one and press bunch, natural picks, natural picks actually happen. And you can end up with just someone running wide down the field. Yeah, we got and, somebody wide open on a corner route because the guy got picked and the coverage got... He was up. just naked. And the reason for that was a real reason, the real route concept. They basically ended up rubbing. The defensive backs ran into each other, which was... It looked really good. Um, and yeah, and also zone coverage is a lot tighter too. Purple, purple zones or curl to flat zones play the corners. 
they play curls first. Um, so, I mean, coverage in general, and also for those at a higher level, and sim guys have wanted this, want, this is something that a lot of sim guys don't like, is even this year in the pa- or in the past, how we could run all the way up with a seam and jump all the way down to a slant. You can't do that anymore. Oh, yeah. Definitely can't run around and cover three routes no, at the same time. No, no. I mean, you can st- you can run in the middle of two seam routes, and then when right. they th- if they throw the ball too late, run over to the w- either side or, you know. But it, you're not going to run 10 yards down the field and then pick something up that – and then pick something off that's thrown five yards behind you with your back turn. Well, and I also noticed – one thing you could do last year with holding down the, the triangle or um, yeah. Y, it, running around, like you would get one of those balls that's thrown over your head by a few feet, and you'd kind of like suction to it, and you would pick it off. And this yeah. year, that's that's not going to happen. If it's thrown a few feet over your head, you're going to hit that button, and there's he's not going to do anything. And it's going to frustrate you because you're used to him lurking that, but it's not going to happen, and they're going to get completions over you. So that was kind of nice. I want to go back to Banjo really quick because a lot of guys don't understand that. And basically – Typically, people think just man coverage, you're lined up on your guy, it shows the guy that you're lined up with, and it stays with that. And in a traditional sense, and you know, ne- you know, in a, a standard um, you know, one by one set or even a two by two set, that probably applies. But when you go into a bunch set, you wouldn't before banjo coverage or without banjo coverage, you would really have to play zone there because otherwise you're going to get picks and stuff like we saw. So basically the banjo principle came in where the DBs have rules on who they hand off to. So you can play man coverage, but they might change who they're covering based on how the break is at the line. And that's actually working properly now. Yes. And you're not really going to want to press bunch from man, right? Which is a, which is a real concept. Like you don't see NFL teams pressing up on bunch. Like it's just not something that you see. Um, Also um, match principles were a lot better. Um, that's what not only, test a whole lot, but explain oh, well, that a me and you bit. actually, me and you actually did see it the one time when I ran buck slant because we wanted to see how buck slant reacted with it. Mm-hmm. And remember the um, the seam flat actually dropped down onto the um, the crossing route and matched him, and we watched it on the replay. Right. Um, this year, in match principle, let's just say plain cover three match, it worked versus trip sets if you just ran verticals. But if you ran anything else other than verticals, you were dead. You're talking about in 17? In 17, right. exactly. Now, in 18, it's not – they haven't added a lot more. What they did was fix the problems with what was there. And just that alone completely changes the game. And, like, some of the pattern match principles, you can look them up. It's really easy to Google. What are some of the um, what are some of the concepts that that a match would be effective against? Okay, so anything that that goes five yards or more down the field, the person they should basically essentially turn it into a man defense. Okay, if you understand what I mean. Right now, there's that's the type of thing that you a lot of times will see shallow crosses run against, where you'll see three verticals going down the field and then a shallow crosser coming over the middle, um, because they don't match anything five yards or less. Okay. This year, you're seeing that play out the correct way. Um, it's really hard to explain every match principle f- because right. I have to go through every formation. That's why it was kind of good for the average person that all it really did was take away four verts because it was easy for everybody to kind of oh, figure yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. but you know, having it more complex, I'm still trying to think of. How to explain it to the layman that might be out there? Because I know, you know, playing in our leagues, we get a lot of we got some guys that understand football. We've got a lot of guys that are kind of average football guys, and they don't understand. They don't understand. Um, some of them don't even understand Tampa too. But you know, match Mabel, um, the cover two um, carry, like they don't understand why I want to run that. When are a good time? So considering those all have. Well, at least match and maybe or uh, match and carry have match principles. Like outside of four verts, like what is a concept that somebody might be killing you with that you're just like, all right, I want to run match or carry here. Anything that has like a lot of routes going more than five yards down the field. Okay. Um, essentially, like say you had. Um, so why is it better than man? 
Because it can it can change to just a plain cover three. It's more of a confusion thing. For it, the yeah, it can. Okay. It's not something you're going to want to run all game long or anything like that. It's something that you want to mix in to confuse somebody. It's going to align like a cover three. It's going to look like cover three. At the snap, it's going to look like it's cover three. And then all of a sudden, someone's going to match, and you can trick somebody into an interception. Okay. Um, so, like, deep dig type routes, things like that, where you'd, accept that, you'd expect that outside corner to continue to not basically follow across the middle of the field. He'll end up matching it 15 yards down the field and jumping for an interception. Okay. Or knocking down the pass. I think I, I think I threw a pick like that this year. I think I was expecting because usually those dig routes, you hit them at the break, and you know they come open so well against cover three. But I think this time he jumped it, and I was like, whoa, what, what, what happened there? But it was yeah, probably a match and that's, concept. That's something that we've seen too was um, when you tried certain things versus players that you knew were elite, they would jump it really quick. Like say an Earl Thomas or. A, Richard Sherman on the outside, they did a lot better. And the crazy thing is Anthony White, who is the design, who's really responsible for most of the plays and concepts that you see go into this game, is still working on deep zones to an extent. And that's actually pretty – and they're already really good, but there's just still a few minor bugs. Remember, this is just an alpha build. But all the other zones, for the most part, were done and fixed, and they – Flat zones, hard flats, play the flats, um, soft squats match as they should. For a lot of people didn't realize when they ran something with a soft squat on it, why the flat defender wasn't there anymore. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I always that as feedback early on in the year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, my guys are taking off here. What's going on? Yeah, and then cloud flats also play good. Um, I was actually asked if if – um, I thought we were going to run a lot of soft squats this year, and I, I still don't think so. So, okay, you, you brought up uh, Cloud Flats. On corner routes, that was one of the big things. It's always been hard to, not just the C routes, but like tight end corners and stuff like that. What are the what are the the zones, uh, whether it's this year or, or in 17, that are the ones that you want to be in against the guy that's kind of keeps trying to beat you up with corner routes? Okay, in 17, I'm going to go over 17 real quick first. Um, curl to flat zones or purple zones did not play the corner well at all. They did not do what they were supposed to do. Corners got naked. Um, they played curls okay here and there. Um, in 17, what I would do and what a lot of people would do at a higher level, which I guess your average user wouldn't know this, is we have cloud flats on the outside and we put our user on a hard flat. And so that... And so that would make the cloud flat drop further. And this isn't something that we wanted to do because, you right. know, it makes us take a step to the right first, say if it's to the right side of the field. Um, but that was why Mabel didn't play correctly. You always had to have you always had to have a hard flat underneath a cloud flat to take away a corner or a C route the correct way. And those deep, deep corners, you there was no way you were stopping those. Right. Um, and so like, this year, what's what's changed? Um, you can just throw a purple out there, man. If they run a C route or a corner route, they're done. Yeah. <laughs> He's right underneath it. Every yeah. Time. I didn't like, see the only time we ever got corner routes open was it was when it was a tight end against man coverage, but a corner route is going to beat man coverage, especially from a tight end on a maybe a linebacker that's not that good. He's going to beat that a decent amount of time. And yeah. So that, that actually might bring in to one thing we want to talk about a little bit more is the the adjustments, the DB adjustments. How do they work as far as do you have to press? Because obviously if you press, you can reroute the defender inside or outside. You can try to funnel them into the strength of your defense. You can also try to take away you know, a corner route or a slant or what they're trying to do. How do they work if you're backed off? How do they work if you're like a linebacker covering a tight end? Are those adjustments going to help you at all? Oh, shading? Yeah. In 18? Oh, yeah. Um, here's the thing, though. When you press up and then shade, like, say, from two men under, say you shade to the inside, you're going to see your wide receiver shift to the inside to, to you know, play inside leverage. So you're going to give away a tell. That's that's the one thing. Now, if you play Is that off realistic? Man, yes. Okay. Yes, you'll, you'll see that happen in the NFL. Okay. Um, better corners won't do it 
it, because they're they're good enough with their footwork to get inside quick enough and force that outside release and or force the inside release. Um, but you can also but, bypass it by doing your shade before you get to the line. Exactly. And now the way that that works though is you're still t- you're taking a risk with that because now you're lined up over the center. Now now it comes down to a ratings battle between the corner and the wide receiver. Um, you could see it. Julio would still get that inside release if the corner wasn't positioned to the inside of him. Oh, so you have to, so if you shade before you get to the line, he's going to try to go inside, but he's not actually going to take that step inside. You have to wait until he's on the line of scrimmage that shade for him to actually physically make that step. Yes. Take that, so that so you don't get so you don't get the tell. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Or if you shade from like cover one when they're not pressed. Uh huh. And then call press after the fact, they'll line up directly over the receivers. This is what I saw. Okay. Um, but like I said, it turned into a game. Um, you're not giving away the tell, but at the same time, you run a higher risk of them getting the release you don't want them to get. Right, because you don't have proper leverage. Exactly. Um, and it's going to depend on essentially the receiver you're going against, the corner that you have, um, things like that. Um, linebackers were doing a good job off the ball they were doing a, in general just off the ball not pressed a man played a lot better than it has any year that i've played madden yeah because normally even the years that man was actually good it was good when you could when you were pressed up on them and they would hold the press too long um but no i didn't see that this year and you don't see a lot of crazy um I wanted to go ahead and bring this up real quick. You're not going to be able to drop two uh, two out of four of your linemen into coverage, or you'll just have a minute and a half in the pocket just to look around. That's a okay. <laughs> I want to actually. I want to get back to that, but let's. So I want to. My bad. Clear... It just popped in my head. Right, just... right. No, no. Let's let's come back to that. The one thing that came to my head when I heard that they took the step, I think I saw Sim uh, mention it on Twitter. So obviously from an observant player like myself, if I see you adjust inside, my automatic re- response is going to be, I'm going to run it out, right? Um, you're taking away the inside, I'm going to run it out. So how do, what happens then? Isn't it exploitable where we can just, we know where you're trying to take away and I'll, just, I'll run a slant if you're shading outside or I'll run it out if you're shading inside? Well, I mean, the chess game comes into play. Okay. You have to see what your opponent's tendencies are. If you see them starting to pick that up, shade back to the outside. Okay. And they may start to move. They may not. They may stay where they're at, and then they may undercut the route. Because remember, if you're playing a two-man under, they're going to be in trail position anyway. Right. So if you shade back to the outside and your guy doesn't shift back before you snap the ball, because most people, what they're going to do is they're going to they're gonna hot route that, and they're going to try to snap it quick. And shading is not something that takes a long time to do. You just press Y or triangle and just flick the right stick, whichever right. direction. So that's not something I don't see that being a problem, to be honest with you. I see it adding to the chess match. But so what if you think, of, think like about a, what if you came out like a cover two and you pressed? Can you still do the shade to kind of make them think you're in man and try to get them to do that? But you're actually in a cover two and they're throwing into the. The only the time I the only time I seen that happen was when I man aligned from zone. Okay. Um, because we were just trying to disguise different coverages and see what it would look like. Um, man align actually works better from zone this year, which I like. Um, because right. it's just one more way to add to the chess game. Right. Trying to make confused. it look like man. Exactly. Um, I don't. I mean, I would like to not have to base align every single play. Like, I mean, base align is there so to add more confusion and to try to add to the chess game. But if you've ever seen Clint tweet about it, he hates it and he doesn't think it's realistic in the least, but it's in there. Um, he says that, but I would challenge him on that to a certain extent because I've seen when Rex Ryan was the coach of the Jets, if you remember the playoff game where they held Brady in check for three quarters and just destroyed mm-hmm. him, he went from – playing all always just being like cover zero send the house at tom brady to only rushing three and playing a pattern match defense but when he was pattern matching he wasn't lining up over the receivers he was basically giving him the same look 
every single time and changing the assignments of which safety was dropping into a hook and which safety was doing this or dropping a middle linebacker deep. It depends on the coordinator and the right. personnel you have to work with. So I've seen it done. It's not something that happens as often as we use it in Madden. Though. See, I, see, I've always kind of thought that with base line, like it's a good way, like if you're trying to blitz, you base line, they think it's a base coverage and all of a sudden you're blitz. Although it always seemed to me, and, and of course I didn't do it a whole lot, I always seemed like when I did that, my blitzer was always too far off the line and it would take forever to get there and I'd always leave a big hole. Um, I don't, you guys probably have more adjustments than I would to probably try to offset that. But that was what I always ran in, so I didn't baseline a lot. But conceptually, it kind of, it, it is something that's kind of interesting that you can give somebody the same look, which I like to do. I like to play a lot of, you know, I'll play cover four and I'll press. I'll always press, right? So then you can't tell, is it cover four, is it cover two, or is it two man? You know, I like doing that because I don't want my, my opponent to figure it out. So baseline does give you that option, um, which is cool. Another thing you kind of talked about a little bit um, last night, and it's one thing that didn't necessarily affect CFMs, but for anybody that cross-pollinated, you saw the cross man, and they took that out this year. Hmm. And so now... The one thing that I think is kind of coming up, it popped into my head, I know some other guys are having the same fears, is, well, that was the one way, especially online, to defend against crossing routes. So now, what are we going to do defending against crossing routes now if cross man's not available? Here's what's nice. Um, there is one way around cross man, and that's to man somebody up and then drag your person all the way across the field. But if you do that, you know what someone just did. Right. It so, I mean, it's it's so obvious. I mean, like, it, go, please do that. Because right. now I know, <laughs> now I know there's going to be a big hole in the zone right there. <laughs> like, right. like, you know, so, um, but as far as defending crossing routes and, and concepts like mesh, um, you're going to see more like cover two, that'd be more of like a cover two type thing. And also, you're going to have to time the throw of your route a lot better because of the way flats play. Right. Um, flats, even from cover three, flats will come down. If you, if you try to throw those drags too late, they're going to get popped. Um, and if you throw them over the middle, I mean, this is a realistic NFL concept. You send some, you send a tight end on a seam and you have two drags or two shallow crosses or any type thing like that crossing over the middle of the field. It's a difficult thing to defend in general. Right. But what I seen a lot of was, my my vert hooks were come were dropping down into dropping down the, and passing them off. Now like they would 18. they would come yeah they would come down and then they would kind of pass them off. Um, and then you still have your user. If someone's running a, a bunch of crossing routes against you, once they pass that tackle box, those flats are going to be right there. Whether you're in cover two or cover three, if you call hard flats. Right. So if you were to just stay in that area with your user, like I said, you can't cover a lot of ground, but if someone's just running dual drags, you're going to be able to defend that with your user. You just stand right there. You know right. what I mean? So like, it's not even something that's hard to, what, to do with your user. So well, one of the big things with crossing routes wasn't, it wasn't so much like the shallow crosses, which I mean, they did come up in the flats a lot. And that was something that some guys exploited, but one of the big ones, I mean, going all the way back to 15 that I remember is more of the deep crossers. Because they would come across the middle, and the zones would play okay in the middle, but all of a sudden they'd get into that corner area, and then they're wide open. But you kind of talked about that with the purple zones now. They're going to probably recognize those more and be able to play those a lot tighter. The thing with the purple zones, they stay back more. Right. Um, so I think, um, like I said, with ratings mattering more, and like I said, like you hear a lot of talk – about it being more about the user and competitive this year and less about ratings. But I clearly seen a difference based on the level of player I was using um, as far as the way they defended things. And, I mean, you're going to see people make mistakes that aren't good players. Right. Like, it just is what it is. Like, this year... One of the big players to use in salary cap, let's say, for instance, that you could save a lot of cap with was Darius Eubanks. 
middle linebacker. He's he's a terrible. Well, he's not a terrible. He's in the NFL, so he's not terrible. Right. But as far as a Madden, as far as in Madden, he's not going to be one. He's not someone you're going to really want to be using as a starting linebacker. But he could cover anywhere on the field. You're not going to see that this year because even James Harrison, James Harrison wasn't good for anything except pass rushing. Right. In any mode. <laughs> like he was he was really bad. So, I mean, those deep crosses, I really don't think you're going to have as much of a problem, even deep posts, like which were the biggest problems this year. And I'll give you an I'll give you a play right now that. This year would have been completely indefensible. Um, and this is a play me and you saw too. It was in the Saints book, the ace pair chief formation. If anybody remembers what that is, it's a single back formation, two tight ends to the right, one's offset on the line of scrimmage, two wide receivers on the left, one on the line of scrimmage, one stacked right behind him. And essentially, you would have a you had a bench concept, but the forward two wide receivers were running those S posts, but instead of to the middle, they were going to the outside. And in Madden 17, that would have broke the game. In 18, if you if you had purples on the field or even you played man coverage with outside leverage, it was locked. So, I mean, like the creativity and the thinking level in this game is much higher. So, right. I mean. Much higher level for people thinking and, and creating more of that skill gap. That brings up a that brings up an interesting point. I can't picture these little S routes, but it does make me think of a conversation. Okay, okay, S route. Um, Z spot from bunch. The S post on the outside left. Skimbo ran it all year long. If you watched any tournaments, the S route. It looked like a giant S. It was a it was a deep post. Went in, up, and and back. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I switched. Okay, and and you couldn't defend it with cover two or and cover three was broken to deep third safety. Right. So you had to either user it or cross man it from way on the other side of the field. Gotcha. So another thing that just came up the other day, we were talking about um, double moves, basically with the new with the new shading and everything, uh, putting double moves. So something like a post corner. Um, how will that affect? Like, how is that supposed to be played? How will it affect? Like, if you want to, if you're expecting a corner and you shade outside, say, but they're running the post corner, is the fake to the post before going to the corner going to throw that off, or how is that going to work? I've seen double moves work really well. Okay. Um, it wasn't a, meters. So if yeah, it me, wasn't a, it wasn't a 100% clip, but, like, even chair routes, you or know, it, like, that's like an out and up or, or in and up either okay. way. Okay. Um, those did really, really well against cover one, as they should. Because all you have is a deep middle safety. You don't have two safeties on the outside helping you. Um, post corners, I only ran a corner post once. Um, no, I mean a post corner once. And I didn't get open versus man, but I was also shaded to the outside. So so shading to the outside, if the, if the end result of the play isn't outside, the post isn't necessarily going to make them bite inside and take it over. I think that also has to do with the level of player that you have there. Right. True. Um, you got a 70 play, overall play, corner. He play might bite on it. Yeah, play recognition, man. So now go back to your um, your dropping guys in the safety or in the coverage, and you talked about James Harrison. So this is something that a lot of guys don't understand. And there's ratings thresholds, I believe, for both sim and um, yes. competitive, and they might be a little bit different. But basically the idea is if you – on, on competitive, at least, if you have over a certain threshold and you're using the player, he's not going to drop the interception. Probably going to be tuned more of a dice roll for, for sim guys. But the idea is, basically like a James Harrison, if you don't have a guy that's got a good catch rating, you're not going to be able to sit there and user him and just pick off passes like crazy, which is another thing that's a detriment from dropping guys into coverage. Talk a little bit about how that changes the game and the new things, how they affect that. Yeah, I directly tested this early, and I asked them what the threshold was. And the threshold at EA Play was a 70 catch or above. For, for competitive. For competitive, right. which is actually pretty high because there's not a lot of linebackers with that high of a catch rate. Right, which there shouldn't be. No, exactly. I mean, there, there's some in the league that, like, you know, like a Bud Dupree or like a Anthony Barr who have higher catch ratings, Shazier, 
um, Luke Keekley. You know, you're really elite linebackers who are, have ball skills. You know, Shaq Thompson, who was a safety, you know, in college. Um, when I used James Harrison, I was having someone literally just throw a slant every time right at me. I only caught one of them, and it was hitting me in the hands every time. Yeah. But then when I used Shazier, I caught probably about 85% of them. But here's the other thing that came into play with that was were there bodies around you? Right. A lot of people because, don't realize. A lot of people complain about drops, but they don't realize traffic, how it affects it. Yeah, and it's not like if someone blows on the ball. If there's someone really close to you, like, well, defensively is different than offensively as far as catching traffic. Defensively, if there's a lot of bodies into the, around the ball just in general, you're going to have less of a chance of catching it, especially from a linebacker. Um, now, if someone's just throwing in the coverage over and over, you're going to see a lot more interceptions, which I feel they should. Because and, like, and I threw a lot of them, so trust me, that, that's very true. <laughs> and that was on both modes. Like, I, I was throwing more picks on both modes than I normally would because, like, I was looking at it like we were new with the game. We weren't, you know, we were testing different things. Um, a lot of concepts that you don't see as often now are going to be a lot more prevalent, like a lot of different levels concepts. And – high low pass reads and and mixing up what you're doing like the run game and and things like that and as far as the catch threshold on defense like it's not an every time guaranteed thing right on either mode i think the threshold will be higher on compet on on sim um then it'll be more of a dice roll on sim like if you have a yeah even if you have a 75 over catch I think you're still going to drop some just because, you know, the dice roll comes in. But I think in competitive, they said if you have over the threshold you're in your username, you're, you're going to catch it. So I think that's a little bit of, of the difference there. Well, going back to the yeah. um, the defensive line dropping guys in the coverage. That's one thing a lot of our leagues uh, have always had a rule against. You always got to rush at least three. Mm-hmm. Um, you play online. One thing that I started notice, I played like a week or two ago. I got on. I was just trying to mess around with Mutt. And every time I was in like a third and long, this guy would drop 11 in the coverage. <laughs> it was just I'm like what I mean it wasn't even third and long it was like third and eight like it was just 11 in the coverage so what maybe not even necessarily stuff that has changed in 18 but if there has been things that changed in 18 how can you better attack that this year so to make those guys pay for the stupid decisions like that uh there are several ways actually number one they're not going to get a pass rush on you you're gonna right. have a, if it's two if it's less than three rushers like say two you're going to have a long time. If your quarterback is faster than the person they put in a spy, assuming they put a spy on the field, right? you can just run around the corner and outrun them and slide down for five or ten yards, you know, whatever. Go out of bounds, do whatever you got to do, because you get full speed of your quarterback right behind the line. The other thing I noticed, too, was on scramble drill, wide receivers were smarter. So, like, if you rolled out to the opposite side of where they actually left those rushers, um, your receivers actually all broke off differently. They didn't, like, go to a spot, be wide open, and as soon as you throw it, they run away from that spot, like you see in Madden 17 so much, which drives me nuts. Right. The scramble drill is terrible in 17. Um, that was improved. But, like, just in general, like, um, we had somebody rush too, and I was just standing in the pocket, and literally what was happening was as soon as you started to see them get towards the edge – I would just slide to the right with the quarterback mm-hmm. nonchalantly, and then the line would just start moving them back. <laughs> they were just passing them across. So they're not going to be able to get um, pressure with just two man rush this year. No, and no, and that was with that was with like elite linemen, you know. So now if if they rush four and they got elite linemen, you got a real good chance of having a rush in your face. The pocket's going to form differently depending on the ratings between the two, power ratings, finesse moves, things like that, you're going to see a much better pocket. Um, You're going to have to step up into the left, up into the right. You're not going to want to run back seven to eight yards anymore. So, I mean, a lot of that's really good. Um, But if you have a mobile quarterback and someone's doing that, they're in trouble. Yeah. Because you're just going to be in our league, so that'll be fun if somebody tries to Yeah, they're they're just (laughs) – you're just going to take off like they're in trouble or even like in Aaron Rodgers, most defensive tackles aren't fast enough to run down. And that's who you, they people usually spy is the defensive tackle. They don't spy the DN because the DN is the best pass rusher. Right. 
And also, if you... That was if always you, way too effective. Your 55 uh, speed tackle shouldn't be running down Cam Newton. Yeah, and the other thing, too, if they start dropping people, you can, you're can you going to run the ball for 8 to 10 yards a clip. Right. So that was, like, that was my question is on that. Would it be effective with the new blocking and the off-ball blocking, if you're not lined up on them and they're dropping in coverage, can you just, in theory, if it's 3rd and 7, run a dive or something and then get better leverage because now they've got momentum going down the block? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. It was very clear to me. And then also, not even that, even if they rush off four, if they if you pass commit, oh, you yeah. get a huge penalty for that. And right. that's on both modes. Like, you, if you call pass commit and someone runs the ball, like a traditional run, like say you're in shotgun, you just run an inside zone, they get you get a big penalty for that. Now, draws are designed to, you know, take longer to develop. So I would imagine the higher rating you have at linebacker, if you're not using him, he may be able to make somewhat of a play on the ball on draws or delays when you when you pass commit. But from in general, if you pass commit and they run the ball, you're in trouble. And if you run commit, it's extremely aggressive and extremely effective against the run, but it's much more aggressive than it has been in years past. So if you run commit on, say, well, we won't even talk about QB sneak because QB sneak's got to... Uh, they, yeah, they, they, they need to work on that. Yeah, they got to work on that. But so, like, you know, fullback dive, um, in, or even a halfback dive. That's one of the things that a lot of guys on, like, a third and one, fourth and one will go, what's going to happen on that, and what's the best way to attack that this year? Um, the if best way... If they're run committee. The best way to run commit to execute? No, to, to attack it. What? How is it going to work? Is that going to basically shut down ninety um, percent of the time those halfback dies and fullback dies? But what are you? Gonna here's give up here's the thing, though. They bite on play action. Okay. Rushers block on bite on play action unless you pass commit. So if you run commit and run a quick play action like a a, a pa dive type play, you're mm-hmm. probably going to score a touchdown. Okay. Or you can just literally snap, throw a sneak, slap, snap, throw a streak, and score a touchdown. So like there is a real, it's really, really weighted. Um, Very high risk, high reward. Exactly. And if they run commit the wrong direction, and say you ran a toss or a power, like duo, say you ran duo to the right and they ran commit left. Because duo is not just in I form pro, it's in I tight, it's in other, okay. it's in other sets too. So I tight, it's not as easy to judge which side you're probably going to run the ball to. Right. And it, weak side runs work better this year. Um, you mentioned 94 Mike and then 94 and 96 Will. Um, for those who aren't familiar with the terminology, they're basically power zone runs. 94 Mike, obviously they ta- the fullback's going to target the Mike linebacker, which is, speaking from a defensive perspective now, right. the middle linebacker. 94, 96 Will are going to attack the Will linebacker. And why is, So for somebody that doesn't understand why that's important, why, why would you run those plays? Um, there's several different reasons. Um, based on formation alignment that you're seeing, um, the positioning of where see there's 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 one part of strategy that i can't talk about yet that's not public knowledge so i don't want to sure. put that out for sure um but as far but as it's just like the those... 94 will like obviously you're going to target the will linebacker mm-hmm. why is how is that different from say the 94 mike where you would ta- target the, the the middle linebacker Okay, um, so it doesn't just apply to your fullback. Your, that's who your fullback's going to target. Okay. The blocking on your line changes on those as well. So say that the to the direction you're running, say 94 Mike is going to the right side, and say they're in 4-3 under. So if you imagine a 4-3 under type set, the middle linebacker is directly over the B gap pretty much right. on the right side. That's the direction the running back's going to. So your fullback's immediately going to go target him. He's not going to try to target some random person. And then your line is essentially in a zone block, a a power zone type scheme, 
and it's one-on-one -on -one matchup, and you basically are going to read the lanes. It's designed to go through the B gap, but you can stretch it out or you can come in because not only is it a fullback thing, your um, wide receivers are playing most dangerous man, which is in football terminology also referred to as crack replace blocking. It's not just an automatic crackdown. It can, it's called crack replace for a reason. If they see that the, that the person, like say the safety's in the box, they're going to try to crack that safety or slow up and block that safety if he sees them coming. Um, and then you can get to the outside and you'll be one-on-one -on -one with a corner. Um, if there's no safeties in the box, he's going to block the man in front of him and try to get you a lane, right. if you understand what I mean. So there's a lot of nuances to the run game and blocking in general. So what about like 94, 96 wheel? What kind of front or what? why would you want to try to target the wheel? If the gap that you're running at um, – or the area or the way they shift their line and linebackers, if the will if the will is Would more like of a four a threat three over you. front where the will is on the line? If we were just talking basic fronts with no adjustment, yeah, that would the will would be more of who you would want to target. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Um so it brings up a couple of things. One, talk about physics in that um, I brought up Cam, run in with Cam. Now, I wasn't playing you when I was using him, um, but I got one run where I ran up the middle, and he kind of got in traffic, but he didn't just automatically go down. Like, he kind of bounced off a couple of guys, was fighting, kind of squirted free, and then, like, somebody grabbed him and finally – and it looked, like, realistic. Like, I really thought Cam Newton was out there running the ball. Um, another one in the same game, I was playing the Redskins, and I don't know who their running back was. It's number 20. I don't know if you know who that is, but – he ran over Captain Munnerlyn twice. Like I tried to come up there. I mean, he just <laughs> obliterated. I don't know. I, I was trying well, to look I at the roster. Number. I don't. I don't remember their numbers. Yeah. So, but whoever it was, like Captain Munnerlyn's like a five-seven corner. He's little, and he got obliterated twice head on. And that's something you didn't usually see. Like you could hit the conservative tackle, and he'll wrap him up. But in a one-on-one -on -one situation like that, just obliterated him. What did you see as far as physics and how, I mean, I know it's going to affect oh, wow. it in a lot of different ways, but um, how's that going to change the game? This is actually a twofold question when you think about it, because we can go into running backs and, and halfbacks. Number one, first of all, before we even, you know, go into specific position types, suction animations are gone. Oh, yes. Completely. If you break the corner, you cannot hit conservative tackle and suction from behind and take them down. They're gone. No, it, and it's not just tackles either. The suction animation on the swats, the suction animation you get on, on catches and lurks, yeah. all that's – I did not see one all I weekend. Either. I, I also did not see a tackle – did you see a tackle battle, battle all weekend? Uh, see, I don't know. I, I did – I think so. I mean, because Zan didn't see one either. I thought I did, but I could be thinking back to a couple weeks ago when I was down at EA. But I thought, no, I'm pretty sure I saw a couple. I just the the, the big thing that I noticed. Time. The big thing I noticed with them is the button would pop up, but it's it doesn't have that stop and pause like it did last year. It was okay. it was like just instantaneous. Really it was very okay. subtle. So I think okay. you saw them, you just didn't realize them because it wasn't okay. that obvious pause. They didn't stand out to me. I, right. It popped in my head while we were talking about the running game. Um, but, all right, first of all, um, you're no longer going to see stutter steps with your quarterback when you're trying to roll out or move around the pocket. You immediately have the full speed of your quarterback, and obviously it's going to depend on your speed and your acceleration. You're going to be able to roll out of the pocket. Um, I know Zan another, tested Mariota and said it was, he was a beast to run with oh my god <laughs> yeah a fast quarterback's gonna be dangerous he he fumbles though right which is good they should right but i also use cam like you did and cam you could actually use the panthers playbook and use those those quarterback powers right. and run the ball like that and i think that might be something you see people who use like a cam newton may and use the panthers playbook run in like the red zone area which is realistic to or the NFL. Got a, a, a guy like in a franchise, if you got a guy like Taysom Hill or somebody like that from BYU, smaller, but kind of like a power back that ran a lot of that stuff in college. It can give you a different, a different um, play set to use around the goal line instead of what you normally are used to. 
Exactly. And then also the this the the juke moves and spin moves, truck moves. So I didn't use those a whole oh, lot. I tried to use them a I little did. bit. So explain the difference and in those now. I didn't understand because the first time I used it, I, the spin move, I was using the power back. Mm-hmm. And I looked at Clint and I was like, I thought y'all redid these. This looked exactly the same. He said, go into a game with the Falcons and use Devontae Freeman. And I did. And it looked completely different. Right. Which so each each player has a different it's gonna look different. There's probably it's a threshold. Over, it's if you're over eighty five or whatever it is, you're gonna trigger a better animation. Exactly. And each running back's better at each thing. And another thing that I noticed is quarterback movement within the pocket. Each quarterback moved different within the pocket when you were sliding side to side. Their releases were different. Their their release times were different. The way it looked when they threw the ball was different. And this is coming from a person who that wasn't what I went there looking for. Right. I went there looking for no more suction tackles. I had lower expectations going there with the hopes to see more. You understand what I mean? I just wanted the gameplay fixed in a general sense. You actually seen customizations made by specific players. Player models were different. Bigger players felt clunkier and slower than smaller players. Like a Kelvin Benjamin. Like, um, he was big and you could, you could see the height difference. And you could see the size difference. But when he got the ball in his hands, you weren't going to break away like that like you it just felt different using him when he got the ball in his hands as opposed to like a Doug Baldwin getting the ball in his hands right and their routes look different too which was great as well like locomotion in general just looked and felt a lot better so talking about routes and the way the different players feel obviously the theme on 17 was speed is the only thing that matters route running doesn't really matter Catching matters to some degree, but speed is king. If you got a 98, 99 speed guy, just send him on streaks. Eventually, he's going to come open. Obviously, the deep zones are improved. Man's improved. What else did you notice that's going to affect guys that have speed and really nothing else? I noticed that the speed threshold is more prevalent in the open field. Um, like we said, you don't get chased down from behind w- with a Cam Newton when you're getting chased by a big fat <laughs> defensive tackle. Right. You know, um, it's the same thing with receivers. However, we all know Sherman's never one of the faster corners in the game. Okay, so Sherman is a, he was a player that wasn't highly used in mutt or in salary cap because of that. All his other ratings were great, but it didn't matter because if you had a 95, 96 speed receiver, I was screwed. Right. This year, I didn't see that. Well, how, okay. Well, that actually brings up something. So pressing was the biggest problem. You could press, and if your receiver broke the press, he was wide open down the sideline. So how does the how did the press animation change, and how is Sherman going to be able? How is he going to be able to play man and press now? Uh, I'll give you electric. I'll give you an ex- a great example because we actually did this. Um, when I had Sherman impressed up against Kelvin Benjamin, right? Their ratings, I would imagine. Kelvin we couldn't Benjamin's, see any of the ratings. We, for yeah, any of those I, I'm just going off of my knowledge of players here. I would imagine Kelvin Benjamin's release is, is fairly high because that's what he's good at is getting position he's not gonna outrun you he's not gonna have the best routes as far as like the way he runs the routes on the route tree when i had sherman on him it felt like it was more of a battle at the line of scrimmage with those two and i'm trying to use these two because their ratings match up pretty similar if you think about it like Mm -hmm. the type of corner sherman is Big six three physical, um, Benjamin big six four six five physical, and both of them not very agile but very good at what they do. Right. Um, I seen that matchup be very equal as far as the wins were concerned. Then when I subbed out a Sherman and put in the backup to Sherman. Who ended up really, who's really the fourth string mm-hmm. corner in the situation, what we were doing, because we we're just 
we were testing this from dollars so we didn't have crazy pass rush so we could actually have time to see how the releases were. And Benjamin would just kill him off the press. And it wasn't just like flying up the sidelines to where I couldn't turn around and run him down, though, if you understand what I mean. Mm -hmm. He would just beat him off the press and he'd be open. So that's one thing I especially noticed. Now, however, if, if you were playing like a cover zero, which, as you everybody knows, is high risk, high reward defense. Not everybody um, realizes that actually we have some, okay. <laughs> some but, average guys. Average guys think that's a run defense. <laughs> uh, seriously, uh, explain it. Explain the cover zero and why you use okay. it and how it's going to be different this year. See, this, is, this is what I'm saying. Like you guys on a higher level, like this is why I'm kind of like the voice of no, the No, it was man. the way you said it. The way you said it made me laugh. <laughs> it was the way you said it. Guys don't something. always understand that stuff. Um, yeah, well, just like when I refer to quarters coverage, a lot of people think I'm talking about the formation, not cover four, right. you know, so, um, just cover quickly, zero, like the difference, cover, what's different with, with a cover zero cover zero is literally man on man, hat on hat. That's it. And typically like a red zone type defense. Yeah. That's typically what it's used for. Unless you have the personnel to run it. Which would be like the the Jets when Rex Ryan first got there right. and had Revis and Cromartie in their yeah. prime, they could do that. Or the Cardinals when Todd Bowles was there, they could do that. Um, you have to have the personnel to do that up and down the field, or you're going to get crushed. I mean, you don't have anybody behind you to help you. So if you press from cover zero and you get beat off the press, you're done. You're done unless you unless your corner has the recovery speed to catch back up and make the tackle. Because everybody else that's in coverage is targeting, is manned up on their person. They're not worried about helping you. Yes, they'll pursue after the ball's been released. But once the ball's been released, a lot of times, like, if you got somebody on this side running and out or a crossing route coming across this side of the field, that leaves this side of the field with you and just that person. Yeah. And so if you win that battle on a slant, I mean, you see it all the time from, like, the Giants. Teams will run cover zero or cover one against Odell Beckham, and he'll run a crossing route, and next thing you know, he's gone for 90 yards. Yeah. And, you know, like, you're going to have to do a real good job of mixing up your coverage. Coverage zero is traditionally mostly used in the red zone. So you can get fast pressure and force the quarterback to make a read extremely quickly. And Madden, it hadn't always been the case because it's so easy to beat cover zero. This year, I feel as different. It's going to be really good to use in the red zone because of shading and because of things like that. That used to frustrate me so much is you get into the red zone, you get on like a, a third and goal from like the three, you know the guy's going to run a slant or a drag, you run a, you try to run a cover zero to get to him quickly, you try to shade inside, it never works and it's an easy touchdown every time. So this year, being able to actually have that as a tool and make guys you know play that strategy um, is definitely going to be a lot more fun for sure. And I mean, I mean, running cover zero actually might be something that I mix in though. You know what I mean? But I won't press from it. So that's what I always I, try to do I, is try to press and allow the rush to get there. And I'm not even talking about in the red zone. I'm talking about like, you know, just like in, in long situations. Yeah. Um, especially where it, if it's something like from nickel where you'll see the middle linebacker manned up on the running back. Yeah. And say like, um, I forget, the name, like Silver Shoot Pinch, I think is the name of one of the plays. You have a... Um, that's actually your middle linebacker on the right. Your middle linebacker and your defensive back would blitz. And then you'd have somebody manned up on the running back. And then you end up with what's called plus one blitzing. If the running back blocks, that guy that's manned up on the running back, unless you're using him, is going to rush too. Right. So, so now you have rush. seven rushes. Seven, seven rushes. Yeah. yeah, You have seven rushes versus six blockers unless they block the tight end. And even if they block the tight end, if they didn't pass protect the correct way, obviously, you know, if you got more to more from center out on the left side of the field, someone's going to come free. That's one thing a lot of people don't understand, too. When with overload blitzing, they block just their offensive line. And they think because there's five people blocking 
and there's only four rushing, that equals my offensive line should pick this up. No, the right tackle is not going to slide all the way to the other side of the field and pick up a defensive back. That's not how that works. You count from the center over. But um, that's one thing that we tried to educate people on this year. And, like, what a lot of people don't realize, Nickel Blitz has been in the game for, like, four years. And it's been used for, like, four years in the exact same way. It's just this year blocking was broke. Yeah. I mean, like, really, that's all it was. It was not that good before this year. Well, that actually brings up a point. So, I mean, it's hard to tell from playing. I mean, I've probably played about 15 games. I don't know how many you say you've played. I know W was sitting around all weekend. Yeah. Looking at I, stuff. I, I mean, played, you were there for I, two days. I played there. I played about 10 to 15. But, I mean, even but, however, that, like, I sat there and watched intently like from game to game to game i didn't leave that corner right for like two days two so days. So it, my, my thing is is you know you mentioned like blocking being broke and, and there's always something like there's the fullback dive and the double loop three blitz or whatever it was in 16 um there's always something right and right now we're like super high on this game we think it's awesome like can't wait to play it it's so far ahead of 17 it's it's hard to say though, and this would be the the detractor the out there. Oh, there's gonna be something that's broke. Is there anything that you could see? Like, shouldn't we probably have picked up some of that stuff like that? Isn't that why the competitive guys have been out there testing well, I, stuff to try to find I, that stuff? I did find a couple of things. Okay, and we pointed it out. First off, um, something that would directly apply to your audience on sim mode, blocking the backs. Yeah, penalties. way too many. Way too right. many blocking the backs. Right. Well, that was the one that stood out more well, than that's any. easy for them to tune, I think. Exactly. And they immediately were like, oh, we got it. We're, we're taking care of that. Um, but other things like um, target passing, which is extremely difficult. Oh, yeah, we, haven't that's a, that. we haven't even got into it. But I was able to essentially use target passing on wheel routes to jet pack. I showed it to them. We sent it. We sent it over to RG. From what I've heard since EA Play, that's not going to be an issue once the game comes out. So that's one good thing that came out from that. Um, we spent a lot of time when either I was on the sticks or W was on the sticks or someone else was on the sticks. Well, at first, W was just trying to win games. He didn't care about trying anything at first because <laughs> he was like, oh, I'm going to be the best person here. And then eventually, W started testing stuff and looking at stuff. You know what I mean? Like, um, but other people like Zan, we were all testing things and like we'd find blitzes that were coming if you sl- slide protected in a certain way that in years past would have picked it up. But then we would spotlight the person and it would stop them. And also they did keep a fail safe in the game for blitzes. NDS. And they, they kept NDS. Now, Nano detection system if you're not familiar with it. E- yes, exactly. Now, when... We were there, we were sitting there talking to Clint, and we were like, okay, now, this doesn't make sense. If we have this ID the mic feature in there, are they going to be bailed out for calling for ID the right, the wrong thing. person? Right. And essentially, what there were, what the reason that it's still there is essentially for the D-line. Because um, there's not stunts and twists in games being run on the D-line in this game. So you technically shouldn't just see a D lineman just come free through the A-gap. Normally in the NFL, when you see that, it's a defensive end looping because he played a game with the defensive tackle, and it can cause confusion on the line. So I understand that point. And when talking to Clint, essentially what they're thinking about doing is, is essentially turning down the timer specifically for because it's timing based for those of you who didn't know and so they just only, get rid of it though like can't we just scrap that now i felt that way until i got clint's reasoning okay. they want to they want to see what happens with the d-line if someone finds uh, uh if someone finds a way to glitch out the d-line yeah. i guess that um, makes sense not to rip it out completely until you're sure that well yeah because a lot of us that would find that type of thing haven't had enough time to right. find um, and that was kind of my point. Like, is so, there going to be a fullback dive or a nickel blitz, some kind of meta this year that everybody's running? I don't see that happening. I really don't. Because here's why. Especially on the offensive side of the ball, like, 
so many things were useful. In years past, a lot of things just did not work correctly. Like, like there were playbooks that just were worthless. Yeah. I'll give you one example. Like this year, the Giants playbook is worthless to me, which breaks my heart because I used to love doubles flex wing and that alignment and, you know, things like that. Like I like you. I like to be unique, um, which is why I don't like the previous play feature. <laughs> Different we, combo. <laughs> different combo for a different time, but I'm just saying I like to be very unique. And I feel like offensively they were able to do some things that are going to make this game extremely uh, extremely unique. Excuse me. Now, one thing that a lot of people are going to be happy is gone is wide receiver motion. Um, and I don't mean motioning wide receivers in general. Everybody's seen the motioned out slant route from Bunch or from other formations where if you snapped it before he was fully set, like he starts to set, but he hadn't fully set, he ends up on like a delayed slant and it's almost impossible to defend without using it or cross manning it. You cannot snap the ball unless he's actually in motion like you would see in the NFL or unless he's fully set. Not when he's starting to set, he has to fully set. So you don't get that delayed release and you don't get no speed burst crazy jump off of that. That actually brings up a, a question. Uh, I know back in the day um, when I was playing competitively, mid-2000s, that one of the big things we like to do is we like to motion a wide receiver behind the line, snap the ball, and you get an extra blocker. But to me, that never made sense because they're usually always small and they're going up against a linebacker or a defensive lineman. Like, they should get run over. Why are – that doesn't even make sense to me. What did, Have you played with that at all? How is that? Yeah, you know? I did it. I did it. Um, and actually, you do see NFL teams use wide receiver, bigger wide receivers. Bigger. Well, yeah, like a Calvin Benjamin, that would make yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, I tried it with a smaller one, and it didn't work. Like, I got thrown on my ass. Okay. So um, I, I really didn't try it with Kelvin Benjamin, but like like Demarius Thomas, those type of the receivers that are good at blocking, right? Were much better blocking downfield. But then I seen some receivers that I know can't block miss blocks completely or just wander off on run plays. So I mean, I, I would assume that that would the be how that would work too. Playing a role, it, kind it, of like the Captain Marvel and, 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 incidents. And the, yeah, exactly. You take a and slot the, receiver and you put him behind the line, he's going to get run over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can't motion Wes Welker or, or um, do from the Cowboys. Beasley. I, or Ryan Beasley. Switzer now. Beasley. I hate the Cowboys, so the, whatever. <laughs> I got a lot Beasley. of Cowboy fans, so we're not going to go down that road. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a Giants fan, man. So, like, you know, I, I it's just natural. You know, right. we'll take um, it out with this. But Beasley, yeah, he's a good player, though. So I'm not, I don't want to go over this all a ton because Clint basically covered it in my, po in my interview with him. But one thing that I'm super excited about is screens. And I know you talked about, like, a new jailbreak screen. One thing that I hated is running a halfback screen against a guy that's just sending cover zero blitzes at you over and over, and you couldn't <laughs> beat him with a damn screen because you'd have one guy on three blockers, and he would get through every time. So I know you noticed some new plays in the game, and I know you noticed just the screen in general. Talk about it from a personal experience, how the screen game is. Okay, um, I want to talk about the jailbreak screen first just because I'm good at one. <laughs> it looks so good. Um all right, there's a lot of play-action screens in this game to the outside that we know don't work correctly because they take so long to develop. In the... 17? Yeah, in 17. Okay. Okay, they just did not work correctly. This year, those work a lot better. Like, if they if you run a play-action in a screen, um, bubble screens, you don't throw behind them a lot. Yes, I, want to get to, I want to get to the problems first. Right, yeah, that's um, big with the bubble screen. Bubble screens, they don't just throw it behind them. Obviously, under center, you could throw bubble screens, but Can you couldn't you throw them. Can you target pass a bubble screen? <laughs> yeah. It's not, <laughs> it's not easy, but yeah, you can. Okay, okay. Um, that that's why when Millennium mentioned it last night about leading a wide receiver screen to the inside to essentially turn it into a mid screen, okay, which yeah. you see in the NFL a lot. You'll sure. see them, based on the alignment of the defense, they'll take it right upfield. Right. Inside, whereas in Madden, you always had to go straight up field, except that for the year we had the mid screen from like an empty set. 
but the jailbreak screens, man, they work so they're so nice. Um, obviously they're stoppable, but they're really nice, and it's hard to recognize them instantly. Like the biggest thing that you see with um, halfback screens in 17 right now is they're so easy to read. You can just go pick them off like almost immediately. Right. Yeah. Um, if you have any type of, if you're really a, a higher level user or even mid to high level user, you're able to just run right through that gap in the line. This year's screens happen so much faster. You're not going to be able, you're not going to see that as often, as well as you're not going to see the quarterback getting that sack as often. The other thing that you're going to notice is that if someone's run, there are ways to counter it. Um, we didn't even bring this up, but defensive ends can't be manned up on wide receivers. However, they can be manned up on running backs. So if someone's just spanning a, a halfback scream on you, if you man up a defensive end on him, he's just he's going to smack the running back in the back. You could end up with a fumble. You could end up with a broke up pass. What, you could end up with a lot of different things. But as far as the user just shooting through and taking that away and taking it for six, that's going to happen a lot less often. You're going to have to have like a really elite linebacker to do that or know that it's coming because someone goes to a certain formation and does it over and over out of that formation. Um, the other thing is what you said about someone running like um, cover zero blitzes or anything like that. It's going to be very hard for them to live like that because like I said, the screens happen so much faster. Um, that might be my, my most favorite thing in the game. Yeah, the screen. I said ID the mic was the most thing that stand out, but that's always been me because I, you get these guys that just want to blitz. Like they don't know how to play defense. All they do is just blitz, 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 and you couldn't ever really punish them for them in a realistic way because your screen game was so broken. But now you yeah. get those guys that just want to blitz. You got all your different screen options out there. You can make them pay with the big game, force them out of it, and then you go back to playing football. Um, I don't know. I'm super excited about, about that. The thing I did notice, though, if, if you run the screen to the wrong side of a blitz, oh, yeah, you were in trouble, like you which should you should pay. You should be. Right. Yeah. So, like, I mean, I noticed a lot of that. One thing that I've been begging to be in the game, and I guess I could do this with target passing, because I didn't even think about using target passing for this, is I've been wanting to be able to throw the ball away at the running back's feet. Yes. On screens forever. Somebody like, mentioned been, last night. I think Smitty mentioned like throwing it out of the back of the end zone. Like it's oh like, yeah, yeah, so we many different that. options. We did that, but yeah, I, I didn't think about that until just now on screens. I'm gonna be yeah. able to just throw the ball like you know five yards away from the running back or a couple yards away from the running back into the dirt and be and it's okay. Not a intentional, intentional ground because right. that is because people say there's no penalties on on competitive or online. There actually are like roughing the passer. If you hit the quarterback below the knees, that gets called. Um, intentional grounding gets called. Things like that. Um, what about uh, – so I noticed this when I was playing. Um, I only saw it once, I think, but I did see it. And it was a pass interference call. Now, you played a little bit on Sims. You're probably not going to notice it on competitive. Um, I, did you see any pass I, – I noticed one, and it wasn't – like the big complaint last year – was the I pass see. interference call was this can animation where he just grabs him and drags him to the ground. Mm -hmm. He had no control over it. The one I saw looked completely natural. Um, did you notice any of that? Have you seen any of that? I had one call directly on me on yeah. a slant where I came up and I went to, and I was going to try to hit him. Oh, I had one of those too. I hit the guy and I, and I hit him early. early. <laughs> I hit him early and I got the pass interference yeah. called on me. Cause like I said, I played on Sim too. Right. Um, because I wanted to feel the difference. I wanted to see what the big difference is. And to be honest, the way the game plays is pretty much, it feels the same. It's see, okay. mostly that's, slider that's based and other ratings type. That's good. Things. I want you to go over that. That was another one that I wanted to get to. Is Everybody got really caught up in Rex coming out saying that it's felt like three different games. And I tried to say on Twitter that I didn't, I didn't notice a significant difference between the two outside of penalties and injuries. Like they felt very similar to me and people were having a hard time grasping that because they haven't played it and they're listening to what Rex said. And 
I don't, I don't say competitive and sim are very similar to me, minus the penalties and injuries, and maybe a little bit more user. You're not going to have as many dice rolls, but there's they're yeah. very subtle differences to me. What did you notice? It, like I, like you said, is very subtle. The game feels fluid on both. Yeah. The one mode that's just completely different off okay. the wall is arcade, yeah, and it's that, just that's a whole different animal. Yeah, that's just a free for all for that, those of y'all that don't know. The score is going to be like eighty to seventy. It's like it's it's crazy. It's just <laughs> yeah, you, you don't just drop throw passes, it up you don't catch, miss kicks, yeah. you don't overthrow. Yeah, it's yeah, I mean, like, which is fun exactly. and it's great. Bar- it know, might be something that you you know your people, friends over you just or you play with your kids, kids or your girlfriend. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. you you might play with your kids if you got kids just to have fun with them to you know have an experience with maybe them. new kids that are new to the game. It's going to be good for them. But sim and competitive yeah. are the the main modes. Yeah, exactly. And the difference between the those two are, is very slight and like one of the things that a lot of people bring up is the the fact that fifa has penalties in tournaments and we don't this in competitive and this is a very good point but the problem with that is well, your madden, point was very good is what i was pointing oh, out because i know where you're madden, going with as we talked about madden it. does not have front facing penalties yet explain that what fifa does every penalty you see in a fifa tournament was caused by the user so they, sli- not- they, they tried to do a slide tackle and they got there too early or, exactly. you know, they, they hit a button that initiated a grab or something like that. Exactly. Or the goalie and they try to do so- or, or someone other than the goalie and they do something that cause a handball and things like that. Right. I'm not as good at, I'm terrible at FIFA, right. but I actually directly asked this question to Rex, Clint, and a couple Clint's, other people. But Clint basically said this on one of our Twitter conversations one day. Yeah, he actually said it to you, but I went into more depth with it when I asked him. And I was like, how about – there are a few things that I feel are front-facing, which is pass interference if I go and push him out of the way. And he was like, yeah, but we don't have the we, – we're not in the spot where we can have the AI differentiate between when you do it or when the computer does it. So I understand that. Now, in Sim, you're going to see more dice roll penalties. Um, you may see some more overthrows. I you definitely know, saw a lot like more that. overthrows. There were some games where there weren't many, and there were some where it felt like... I think it was... I don't know if it was me and you or one of the other guys, but at the end of the game, it just seemed like every throw we were overthrowing. And so that might be something that needs to be tuned. I don't know what was in it but again we were playing a build that was three and keep this in mind too the build that we play is basically three months away from the end of the game but to us like we almost felt like they could have released it as the game and it would have blew madden 17 away and it's oh, still yeah, three it months would, away from, it would it would knock madden 17 i, I and it's three listen, months away from completion listen, listen i play for money i had every pretty much all the ultimate tickets on salary cap I gave away for free my ultimate tickets to Joke, Duke, and all my other high-level players to those two just because I'm done with I can't play 17 anymore after seeing this. I can't. I'm going to a little bit. We're playing one last season, but I very much understand that sentiment. Because it just it, doesn't. It it's don't, so much different. Nothing's going to translate over for me. No. Because what I'm planning on doing in 18, I cannot do in 17. 17 was very much a meta game. It was very much a exploit game. It was very much a Madden game. 18 feels like it's going to be very much more about football. Yes. Yeah. Um, people like Xan are going to excel. Um, this is going to be a big year. Like in a lot of people in the sim community that don't like watching the tournaments and even casual fans that don't like watching the tournaments, I feel like this is going to bring more into the eSport as well. Yeah. Because you're going to see a lot of differentiating schemes and things like that. Um, That'll be interesting. That was one of the big uh, conversations that we had. Like a lot of sim guys, um, I know Smitty would say it a lot. I think Azur would say it a lot that it doesn't look good. I think Kia even. Like the better it looks, it's going to bring more people in. And watching those, like I don't know. Like a lot of those guys that I feel like they watch it, they watch it only to find what the meta is. So that they can use it and they can dominate online. So I'm not See, sure the people watching it really care how good it looks. No, but I'm saying there's people who wouldn't watch it before that. All right, the viewership, or are they just going to replace the, the each viewership, other? The viewership for the first tournament this year was a lot higher than the last tournament. Was it? Well, I yeah. guess people also fall off from playing Madden too. Well, not only that, you're a casual fan. Right. 
Um, kind of and if you even look at the tournament last year, that stiff one, when he was just aggressive catching problem up and down the field, and that's how he won the that's how he won the tournament. Yeah. It was aggressive catch. It even showed better in seventeen than it did in sixteen. Even though we didn't like a lot of the things that were going oh, yeah. on in seventeen, that last tournament looked way closer to real football than the first tournament. Well, I mean, you also got to look at who the guys were that were in the final four. Maybe. Well, yeah. For the most part. I don't know, though. But, we, you know, we talked about it. Problem's one of those guys. We saw him just run fullback dive over and over again. Yeah, but problem also, problem also, what problem does is he finds something very simple that's football related and he just runs with it. That that's what year, I'm saying. Like, watching him play, he was m- way more diverse than we'd seen him the previous couple of years. And so I think him. that spoke to the, the, changes they made just throughout the course of 17 see and he scares me this year as someone that's going back to full time like i haven't played full time the past couple years i haven't had time um i've had surgeries and things like that that i was going through problem scares me more than anybody this year because of the different things that he can do like he, he finds something very simple and gets extremely proficient at it um Now the fullback dive year, they took that play completely out of the game. It was it was from the IH tight, where the fullback is actually lined up closer to the quarterback, and it was just glitched. It was just a problem with it. Yeah. But they didn't ban anything. Well, the like, tight end, the, would the jumping too was excessive because they had those. Oh, God. <laughs> oh yeah. Speaking of jumping, the those high point pop, pop passes that everybody's seen this year, that's gone. Forget that. Okay. The the quick snap um, from tight, where you just throw a high point pass immediately and you get no animation from the defense. Yeah. You can't do that anymore. Okay. That actually, that, that's funny you brought that up because I actually got beat or tied in a Super Bowl um, with that, and the guy was scored to get to a two point conversion, and then he ran that. He, I don't know if it's the same play that you're talking about, but basically he put a like a tight end on a streak, and he mm-hmm. just snapped it through it right away and it was like the defense didn't even react to it is that what you're no. talking about or is that yeah the defense reacts to it okay that's that's um, good that's a plus because i always yeah, hate that like, call a play don't just use that i felt you know that was kind of cheesy. now now given if i'm sitting there and i just see you have nobody anywhere near my tight end i mean that'll just be my hot you know and well, i mean yeah. that, that's football i right. mean and I, the, the middle linebacker it, should still kind of crash on that, right? At least. Well, it depends on where he is, and it depends if you're on playing a, like a cover two or something. You've got a middle linebacker in the middle of the field. Yeah, of course. But I mean, also you got to take into consideration: um, Did you shift your linebackers? Did you move anybody anywhere? Did you right. call a certain thing? Like, there's a lot that goes into that. That wait, my know, linebackers are blitzing and they didn't stop that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hold on, wait. I changed my middle linebacker for, to a vert hook from a middle hook, and he didn't play the middle. Oh, 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 now we're getting way too complex. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, like, you understand what I mean? Right, like, yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying. Every zone plays different. Like, so, and I mean, is there anything else gameplay wise that you can think of that people are gonna? Anything that you forgot to talk about last night, or that really stood out and is like, okay, this is gonna be, this is gonna change. Maybe something that appeals to sim guys or. I know they've added some plays. Did you notice anything different on defense? I know we got some new ones on offense. I know you were real excited about a lot of different routes and um, Defense was mostly them fixing legacy right. issues. Well, that's like what I see. Banjo the most. coverage working. Yeah, exactly. Because Banjo's been in the game, it just didn't work correctly. Which, and again, this is not a play you're going to see. It is basically a man coverage. It's just their principles against a trip certain set formation and, and how yeah, they a bunch. Yeah, yeah, how bunch, they. Yeah. Yeah, a bunch, not trips. How they decide to play it so you don't get rubs and you have guys running open free for five yards. I tried to exploit it too, just so you know. I Banjo. did try to exploit it. I did try to exploit it with motion to see if like I can make it screw up, and the logic didn't screw up. So that brings up another one. So what about those uh, wheel routes out of the backfield? That became a kind of a meta, especially on third and long. Somebody like out of that, the Cardinals um, two back shotgun formation. They put the that, oh, you're telling us split close? Yeah, maybe. And the and the running back would go on the wheel route up the sideline, and he'd always be wide open. Or they'd go yeah, in a man. bunch, and they'd move a guy wide outside. Why was that happening, and what's fixing that? Well, the reason that was so popular this year was because everybody ran cover two. Okay. And so, like, if you already had three people going down the field, and then you got a wheel route. <laughs> right. And it's essentially running verticals versus cover two. 
Yeah. You, you understand what I mean? The wheel route would just the, by the time the wheel route got open up the sideline was coming down the sideline, the cover two safeties were already back with the vertical routes or the posts. Um, this year, I feel like you can play every different coverage legitimately. So that shouldn't be a problem. Um, the one thing that, like I said, I brought up earlier with the wheel route was me being able to um, essentially jet pack it using um, precision, w using um, target passing. But that's not something that's going to be a problem going forward because um, we caught it. It's easier when you find something before launch for them to fix. It's it's a lot easier. Oh, yeah. And now this year with the fact that they have different modes and they can tune them, it's going to be gameplay tuning more than patches. And people need to understand the difference between a tuner and a patch. It's a good point also. Um a tuner they can just do at any time. A patch, they don't only just have to fix it there. They have to make sure it didn't break something else. And they have to send it to Xbox and PlayStation to make sure that they can get approval from them. Yeah, it usually takes several weeks for that to go through, whereas a tuner they can push in real time. The funny thing about that is, like, who holds that up? But I'm not going to even go into that. <laughs> but Rex it's, said, it's not I, EA, though. Right. I'll tell you, I'll give you that. Rex said at, um, I think it was on my podcast, that, and, and he's talked about it over the years, like they're trying to go to more of a data-based system on all of their things, like they're blocking and everything, so that when things like this come up, they can just adjust it through a tuner versus having to go through a patch because it takes so long. And yeah. this should see, we should get, to, we should see a lot of these things, if they do pop up, see a lot of them able to get fixed a lot quicker. The other thing is too, is, is community education. Um, I think that I think that they would be smart if there is a play that the community feels is overpowered for them to reach out to one of the community members who would know how to stop that. Right. And maybe just put the video in a window in the game. Well, and that's something I think CMAD was has been really big on that on Twitter. Well, like we CMAD has been wanting like like more skills trainer and blog. So, but I mean that but... I actually did the skill trainer all the way through the other day, which is something I never do because I, I already know the mechanics to the game and I know what these concepts are. A lot of the things that people said aren't in skill trainer are in skill trainer. Yeah. Cause I, I literally play, I'll show you it if you want. <laughs> right. I actually played through it the other day. I did the gauntlet too. Um, a lot of it was there, but I think it can be built upon. Right. Um, but, but I think your idea of like taking stuff like having Zan or even NYKia or you or you know a lot of these guys and making videos and then embedding them right in the game so you can watch them would go a huge. That stretch fixing... patch wouldn't have happened, huh? That stretch patch wouldn't have happened. Yes, I mean, and that's kind of I think what CMAT's point is is that nobody knew that Cover Four is an outside run defense in a lot of ways and that that could have shut that down yeah it's a run defense in general right so nobody knew that and everybody was trying to play a cover three and trying to shut it down and they couldn't or they were blitzing and they were getting torched with it and so everybody's like it's op and then they patch it instead of like you said get somebody to put a, a video out there look this can be stopped this is how you do it boom now everybody now a you don't have to patch it and b now every one of your users is more uh aware and smarter in the game. I, I think it's a brilliant idea and keep pushing that to whoever you need to and make them figure out how to get that in the game. Cause that would be awesome. Yeah, exactly. It's just, I think, I think a lot of it has to do with um, stuff above the devs head, whether or not they can do that. If right. you understand what I mean. So right. like, I mean, that, that's got to get cleared. They have to make sure that someone's not going to sue them and, or like, I'm sure they have some kind of agreement that they can send to. Them. Yeah. Exa well, yeah. They, they always have an agreement that right. they, can <laughs> they got, they, they got some good lawyers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah. And, and another thing I don't want a lot of the people that are leaking cell phone footage. I wanted to touch on oh, this yeah. real quick. Yeah, that's good. Y'all need to stop analyzing this cell phone footage because it does not give the game justice visually. Number one, because I'm going to tell you right now, if you think this game looks like 17, you're bugging. I was about to go there with, with that, but go through the cell phone, then we'll talk about okay. the differences there, there visually. Is one, there's one video going around where the guy, guy was mad that Cam Newton rolled out to the right and was able to get outside the pocket and the defensive end didn't do anything. 
on that play, I don't know if it was stock or he did the line crash himself. First of all, the line was pinched. Second of all, it was crashed either to the left or down. I couldn't tell because it only showed the right side of the line. Yeah. But he was crashing. The defensive end was crashing into the B-gap. The right tackle, as he should, turned him inside and got leverage on him as Cam rolled outside of the pocket, which is exactly what should happen. Right. However, you got one person, you know, just trying to grab views. And by the way, guys, they were very strict about no cell phones, no cell phones, no cell phones, no recording, no this, because they wanted the game. They, it's their first year on Frostbite, and it made such a big difference visually. They got the Xbox One X coming. I think part of the reason there was no capture going on is because they wanted to wait until the X was revealed. You have to remember that the Xbox One X was not revealed until after EA Play started. Sunday, right? It was either Saturday or Sunday. Well, it was I think Sunday. It was Sunday because Sunday. yeah, we started on Sunday. Saturday. Yeah, it was Sunday. But we did have PS4 Pro and that wasn't yeah. even the finished graphical look and you could clearly see the difference between yes. Xbox One, the regular Xbox One and PS4 Pro. So we'll talk about that a little bit. You know, obviously the the, the these cell phone videos, they're not giving it justice. Yes, they can kind of very much look like 17 in a lot of ways because you're not seeing everything from a cell phone also like you're saying you don't know what adjustments have been made that maybe the user created some of these things that people are trying to point out being flaws and okay you you crash your line in and you give your your the offensive line leverage they're doing what they're supposed to do so don't always take what you see out there in these videos and, and think that they're gospel listen to people have actually played it you know, and, and I'm not even saying me because I'm no expert on it. I know some people trust my opinion on it, but you're a guy that's played competitive. You played a lot of it recently. Listen to people that are actually out there and playing the game and, and looking at it objectively versus somebody that's just trying to get views and trying to downgrade Madden or, or whatever. Now, going back to the PS4 Pro, Squads was set up on PS4 Pro on a BenQ 4K display. And the difference between that game and the regular Xbox on a 1080 monitor. Was no, like, actually, actually, let me go ahead and correct you real quick. Even the Xbox One was on the same monitor. It was just set it to just, 1080. It just can't play in 1080, exactly. Well, I just so, so they had a little thing on the side of the monitor, and it said 1080p was the yeah. resolution on the Xbox. But on the on the PS4 Pro on Squads, it said 4K. And you, yeah, exactly. The difference. You, the difference. I'm telling you. That people don't want to understand it, and anybody that doesn't have a pro or that's not going to get a Scorpio is not going to see it. But it was night and day. It was it was the most beautiful football game I've ever seen. Like, and I tweeted this at at, um, at Dustin, equipment guru who who works on uniforms. The Seahawks uniform looked amazing. The the depth yeah. of the of the blue and the green and the way the green kind of popped like. I saw a picture online the other day and it, and it reminded me of the game. Like it looked so good and it was so crisp and I, I, you know, I don't want to oversell it, but I don't think you can because like you said, the version that we saw was three months away from being finished and they're going to do more refinements to it. Like it wasn't even the optimal uh, version of it and it looked amazing. Yeah. Like, and like the, the, the <laughs> minor bugs that we did see was like stuff that you would expect in an in alpha. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. It, it wasn't stuff like that was just like, oh, this is going to break the game. Like it was like little things. And to be honest with you, even that, even that wheel route jetpack that I showed, it had, had there been a flat under it, that wouldn't have worked anyway. Right. You, you know what I mean? And, and so like, and, but yeah, to speak on what you were just talking about, man, you could see the individual blades of grass moving. <laughs> like, like, I was like, what? <laughs> Nobody better ever tell me that 2K looks better than Madden oh, again. This I, is, I don't ever want to hear that we again. We talked about this earlier. This is the year, hands down. Like, if you're out there and, you know, you're even somewhat objective. This is the year that there is zero question that 2K isn't even in the realm of conversation. If somebody after this year says that 2K is 2K still better, 
<laughs> they're either A, they're strictly a franchise guy who only likes the halftime show, or B, they're they're legally insane. <laughs> because there's there's just zero like I get the flaws in sixteen and seventeen, even though visually they blow that away. But there's yeah. been so much improvements into the physics, into the blocking, and just visually the graphics on this. Like there is zero question after this year what the king of football is in my mind, and it's not even a finished product yet. No, I, I agree. So, and the thing is, just so y'all know, I don't. I, I'm not affiliated with EA in any way, and I also want to reiterate this: Rex Dixon, Clint Oldenburg. Christian, all of them said, when you go and talk about the game, do not sugarcoat anything. And Millennium said that last night on Sim Standard Radio. Like, they wanted us to say honest feedback. Exactly. And I've said honest feedback, and you have too. Like, the quarterback sneak is screwed up. Like, I hate it. Yeah, I do too. And we pointed it out to them. Like, and I said the bug I found. I mean... And I saw but an instance of a of receiver is... not blocking downfield, and I sent that to Clint. But it was so minor. Like, it was, was it so a good minor. receiver though? It was a wide was receiver. It a good, was it a good blocking receiver? Uh, no, it didn't matter. He was just like running downfield, not even looking. Oh, he you. he wasn't even looking. He yeah, was just yeah. going. But I okay. sent it to Clint, okay. and I told him about it. And you know, again, we got they got a couple months to still work on that. And that could have been already fixed in the, in the current build. We were and playing yeah. a build that was a month old. Yeah, and there, there was another thing I found too, and then. Um, and I showed Christian, and Christian was like, oh, yeah, we already fixed that at the studio. And it was nano detection um, op- was um, cutting on on run defense. Like, I would go to run I only on the user. I went to run, and it pulled me back. Like, I went to shoot the gap to, to stop a run, and it pulled me back. And I was like, yo, what's this? And he was like, oh, we already fixed that. Don't right. worry about it. And it was, on, it was on pulling guard runs. And that's the other thing about blocking that we didn't bring up. On pulling guards, the guards are looking for someone to block. And fullbacks on, like, toss plays are way more intuitive. Exactly. And you have a lot more that you can do from running the ball. Like, um, say if you were in trips tight end. In the past, I know you're running inside zone if you run the ball. <laughs> Not not so much this year. You had, you didn't just have inside zone. You had base, but then you also had runs that ran to the right. Besides just your traditional counter, you had a, a it was essentially um it was actually called buck sweep, but it was essentially oh, yeah, a yeah, counter. You're telling me about this like a buck sweep counter. It was it was a counter, but it was called buck sweep. So you had two pullers leading you outside. That could be now, that could get nasty, especially against those guys that defend with quarter defense. Oh yeah. Even. Oh, ooh, ooh. yeah. But but we were able to stop it with the correct alignment. You understand what I mean? Yeah. It works against what it should work against, right. and it didn't work against what it shouldn't work against. The only there was only one run that was getting blown up by dollar, and this is with Dubby's dollar. Keep in mind, Dubby won seventy grand with dollar. Okay. Now, this is something Dub- we didn't talk about: was dollar and quarter defending the run. Dubby knows how to stop the run from Dollar this year. If anybody was going to stop the run this year, it would be Dubby from Dollar. There was only one run that he was able to just lock the run up with as far as from anything other than 11 personnel. 11 personnel. Three wide receivers, one running back. Okay, that's something that Dollar can match up with and to some extent based on personnel be somewhat effective against the run not completely lock it but you know but if you got any type of power set dollar was blown to smithereens like 26 duo i was getting 15 yards of rip against dollar and quarters yeah and clint wasn't lying when he said he took a sledgehammer to it like they (laughs) completely yeah yeah good luck you want to run dollar all game yeah that's that's music to our ears. Now, this is something I brought up last night, and we'll cover on here because you talked about it. Um, I don't know a lot of guys that listen to me. I, they, I don't know if they're as worried about it, but the splits are different this year. And oh, yeah. so, so the split. So talk about how that changes as far as like the passing game. And then the one thing that it popped up, and you answered it last night, but go ahead and answer it again. Is is that going with with having wider splits? Is that or why is that not going to make inside running from shotgun or um, you know, two by two sets or even trip sets, even more powerful. 
it's not just wider splits. It's realistic splits. Um, in the past, as you know, like say you had um, just say Y trips. Let's just throw Y trips as the formation because everybody knows what it is. Right. If you were on the right if hash, you don't, it's out- a tight end, a slot receiver, and a wide receiver to the right or okay. to one side. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Just really, yeah. Got, let's let's and not you got assume solo, everybody knows. You everything. got this. So well, I mean, it's just it's it's in pretty much every yeah, play. Yeah, yeah. It's That's a common formation. So. Or even gun bunch, where you have a solo wide receiver to one side, right? Right. If you were on the right hash before, that wide receiver, it didn't matter. He was set to a certain distance from the left tackle. Okay. Now he's actually playing the split that he should. He he lines up a little bit wider. So now he's on the wide side of the field, and you can actually use that space on the wide side of the field, where in the past... You didn't get an advantage. You you didn't have that advantage of more space when you soloed him out, which is a real concept. And so now they're more set to like if he's gonna be set up on the outside of the numbers, that that's where he would be set up now versus being a specific distance from the tackle. Exactly. In the past, it was a set distance right. for each receiver instead of where he would line up based on the formation. Right. As you got because in from- real life, they typically line up based on the hashes or the numbers but in yeah. the game they were based on yardage from the tackles or tight ends distance from the tackle distance from the offensive line right you would see them in the exact same spot like if you were to take practice mode and start in the middle right start in the middle of the two hashes mm-hmm. directly in the middle of the center of the field if you were to just stop the play and move the ball to the right to the right hash you would see everybody shift the exact amount of <laughs> exact right. amount of space. Right. So that's not realistic. They fix the splits. Do I feel like that's a problem in the run game? No. Because when you're going to have a solo receiver out there, that's also going to be the weak side of your formation. Um, if you run inside zone to that side, as long as you have a linebacker on that weak side playing that run fit as the force defender, he should be able to cut it back inside, force you back inside. What if you run like a trips formation and let's say you got three wide receivers to one side, one to the other, and you're in dime and you've got four, four D linemen and a linebacker last year, that was pretty powerful to run inside zones from, like you said, if somebody was in trips, you knew they were running inside zone. So how would something like that be? Why would that be better? That year? splits wouldn't affect that. Okay. Um, like a trips formation, like you just that. think of splits, you think they're further away. So it's even more room up the middle, but um, you would. That's the way you would you would imagine it, just thinking about it. But it, it's more so the run you call versus the personnel you see versus the shift you see versus uh, it. It's all more realism. Well, the range tackles will play a bigger run. role in that too. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, we didn't even say that. <laughs> just popped in okay. my head. Yeah, yeah. Like if you're stuck, if you get stuck on linemen or or you're being blocked or anything like that. If you're near a quarterback or a running back, you can press left bumper to reach out to your li- linebacker or lineman's left to grab somebody, or you can press right bumper to reach out to the right and grab somebody. Um, also, the canned animations on the runs where if you ran into somebody, you would just get like that weird stuck and then spin move thing, that's gone. And this is something that happened with me and PX. We were testing 26 Duo. Um, and I blitzed. I was running a cover four with um, a cover four mic, and I was flipping it. So essentially, I was blitzing from the opposite side of the run because I wanted to see what would happen. And essentially, what happened, my defensive tackle or my defensive end, and, and think this is three, four odd now, got enough push on his guard to actually push him into the way of the halfback. And what happened was the halfback stopped, essentially put up his hand on the back and kind of like stutter stepped. And PX was able to cut it back up the middle of the field and a hole opened for him. And now see, the thing was, I over pursued because in past Maddens, there's no way you're going back up the middle of the field with that. Yeah, you're running behind into your behind yes. your center or whatever like you can't make that little subtle cut up the middle so you have to keep gap integrity in this game which is that immediately showed me you have to keep gap integrity and you can make people pay for it 
Right. And that's what they Which sold last great. year. And, that, and people are going to hear that and they're going to be like, well, that's what you said last year. But the difference was, is you had those over pursuing or the, the over corrections on your cuts and stuff like that. And uh, there's so much has changed with it, but this year you really do. That, have that organic, an, that organic animation changes a lot. Yeah. Like, because it, last year, like I said, if you ran into, if you got too close to a lineman, he'd kind of get sucked into the yeah. lineman and then do like a can spin move. That's gone. Like yeah. they actually slow down and you have to make the decision where to go. And it's, and again, it looks so much more realistic when he's running up there and he slows down and he puts his hand off on it and kind of pushes off. And then you can, you cut back inside. Obviously you have to make it yourself or he's not going to go anywhere, but you cut back inside and created a hole. And I wound up breaking it for like an 80 yard touchdown because you, you your linebacker vacated the middle. So it gave me that cutback lane and a ton of room up the middle and, and looked- the blocking on it downfield. I don't remember how it was, but you obviously had your safeties back there, but they all got picked up. Um, at some point, I don't remember how it all unfolded. Well, but they I mean, were just... in cover four, so they were playing the run fits. Right. So they came down on the run. So all you That's had to do was. was make that first person miss, and you were gone. Right. And you had the speed to just basically left trigger right around him and go. And I was I was stuck trying to get back to you, and because of the limits on user now, you can't do that. Yeah. Like, if you're 15 yards away from somebody, you're not going to recover that quick. You're not just going to turn around. I it threw me off. You make a and mistake, was, you're gonna pay for it. Exactly. Um, yeah, man. Like, and it reminded me a lot of what Le'Veon Bell does in the backfield, where he he'll dance in the backfield right, right. and look for a hole. And, and that's, that's what, you know that was one of the things that I've always wanted because you you they've made it more where you have to be patient, like you can't hit the the speed burst as soon as you get it and take off like you have to be more patient and kind of follow oh, yeah. your blocks but now with that kind of animation when you start to run in to guys it's even more so they can slow it down and yeah. and just makes it feel a lot more realistic i know we've we've gone way longer than we wanted to um so we're actually going up on two hours which i wanted to see we might break this up into multiple i don't know i'll figure out how to do with it but last question i want to ask before you go um it was kind of a question that was asked to me and i thought i think it's interesting to find out what other people say based on what you know about the game based on what you've seen so far if you were to guess on what the metacritic score was going to be for madden this year what would you think the metacritic score because yeah. i think it was like an 81 or 82 last year if they gave that an 81 last year man that thing better be higher than that i know that <laughs> I, yeah i know look all right what would you grade it on a scale of one to ten? Right now, probably an eight and a half. But last right. year, I would have graded at like a five or a six. See, I gave last year a seven. Um, but see, I also play franchise, so that that plays into it a little bit too, which is not something that you're 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 pretty much just mutt and playing competitive. So, but I'm looking at it from a variety standpoint too, right. like what you're able to do. And I'm looking at it the day the game came out, I probably would have gave it a seven. See, I probably um, would have gave it an eight and a half when it came out, but then I downgraded it to a seven the more we went along. And you downgraded. Well, even the day, even the day a... I came out, I I had already found stuff. Right. Like, well, you look at like, it in a different way than we do. This year, this year, like, I in the amount of time that I normally find stuff, I had enough time, ample time to find what I would normally okay, find. Okay, so at. you said an eight and a half. That's a big gap. Like me personally. <clears throat> I think when they first asked me that, I said 83 or 84. But I said, based on what I saw, it should be like a 90. I feel like this game could be the first man in a long time to get a 90. But I was kind of worried that it doesn't seem like a whole lot's been done to franchise. That that might hold it back a little bit. But things like squads and the story mode might, I don't know, might counteract it. I don't know. Here's the thing. if I don't know if you've been watching Rex's Twitter. But they got nominated for best in show a lot. I saw that. I saw that. So that's a what I'm lot. saying. Like I think I'm I'm walking back on my projection of like an 83, 84, 85. I'm probably thinking I'm probably thinking 87, 88. Yeah. So what? Maybe okay, so higher. With that being said, what's still but missing? They're hard then? to judge. They're what, hard to judge. What's still missing then that keeps it from being a 10 or a 9.9? Um, I don't know how they're gonna look at long shot. But you even said from if you were gonna grade it, you would give it like an an 85. But I'm looking at it from my perspective. I'm talking well, that's about what I'm saying. from your perspective, what's still missing that they need to work on? Uh, I would like to see more defensive formations, which I actually know they're trying to get more in the game. It's just a matter of whether they can or not. 
there's a few things I can't say that kind of like disappoints me a little. Um, actually, actually, now I just remembered something. I actually got to bring that up. I'm probably talking like 90 now. The coach adjustments. Oh yeah, we didn't even talk about coaches. I didn't even yeah. use them while we were out there. I did. Did you? Okay, now this I asked Rex this on Twitter, and I didn't get a response on it. So we keep going. We keep finding things to talk about. One thing, okay, I like the best on best. If I want to put Josh Norman on Des Bryant or whoever, I can do that. But what if I'm playing as the Seahawks and I want Richard Sherman just to play on the left? Can I do that? Can I turn off those coach adjust- that coach adjustment? Yeah. How? You can. Ch- all right. Look, here's all the different. Th- <laughs> there were so many different things. Auto flip was within the coach adjustments, okay. so you could turn it on and off throughout the game That's nice. without pausing it. Okay. Um. When you went through best on best and defensive assignments, you could you could do it by overall. So Richard Sherman would follow the best overall receiver regardless of where he subbed them in at. Right. You could do it based on speed. You could do it based on height and weight. You could do, or just size in general. Um and if you just wanted him to play in the slot all game long, nonstop, you could just manually sub him in right there. That's that's I didn't I don't think you can do that from the coach adjustments. I kind of misunderstood for a second. It took a second to. Will that override process. the coach adjustment though? If you if you want, yes, like yes. I just want to play him on the left side of the field, or if I want to if I want to manually, like before you could do your um your uh, formation subs from the, from the play call screen. If you wanted to have a true boundary or field corner, you could do that in theory. By just flipping them back and forth, like can you mm-hmm. still do that now, or is it all? Yeah, you can still do that. Okay, okay. It, it, everything's been added on top of what was already there. Okay. Um, other than the legacy bugs that were taken out or fixed. Um, yeah. but coach adjustments in general is going to change the game. I mean, you got if you, people who played the old NCAA games, if you remember that you could, you know, play the D line aggressive or conservative as far as pass rush or balance. This is going to play a big role in sim leagues too, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and penalties, late, late game situations, penalties. trying to strip a fumble. Yeah, strips, you can play aggressive. Interceptions, you can play aggressive or conservative or balanced. But you're going to – there's a risk-reward to that. That's going to be interesting to see if, if you how well pass, those are balanced. It, it felt actually – actually, when I put pass rush on aggressive, I got run on easier. Okay. That's good. Um, they over pursued. They over pursued. Okay. Um, if you put pass blocking on aggressive on sim mode, you got a lot more holding. Um, you also on competitive mode and sim mode, you got more block sheds against you. You would have times where your line would hold up a lot longer, but then you'd have times where you'd get shed really quick. So which all, what were all the adjustments? You could play aggressive line, aggressive strip, aggressive block, aggressive it's aggressive, interception. It's aggressive, conservative, and balanced for all three, for, for all of them. For what um, were the different ones you could do? You could do it with secondary. You could do it with strips. You could do it with D-line, O-line, um, wide receivers playing the ball in the air. Okay. Um what about did they have the running back one where you could fight for yardage or be more conservative? Yes, fight for extra yards is there. Okay. Um, and then there's a. I gotta stop there. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that that wasn't that wasn't a hint or anything. <laughs> we might have to edit that out. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm saying like there may be things that may come in the future, like 19 or something like that. You know, well, just. That's uh, actually talking about that. We'll, just, we'll wrap up on this real quick. Rex said that in his interview with uh, Sim um, about franchise, that they can now, working with 2K or with NBA Live, that they can, their franchise, they can drop live content into the franchise. Probably not going to happen this year, but that was something that they talked about just with general gameplay before, was that with the they, tune, like, kind of like we talked about with the that, tuners. Now that they're all on Frostbite, the yeah. thing is, one of the big things is, they can work with each other to solve certain bugs. Right. Um, when one team finds a bug, it's usually probably going to be in the engine somewhere in the other teams. Right. So they can all work together to fix it. So well, Somebody asked me that on Twitter today, and it's we, important that people understand that. 
when like, when they find a bug, that's all the teams together. And it's not just live and Madden who are in no. the same building. It's FIFA. Battlefield, Battlefront. I mean, you know, I'm I mean, not guessing they, Need for Speed, any of that. Like I mean, weather, they, lighting, physics. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, makes- if one of those studios comes up with – because I know they talked about it last year before they even went to it, and they were talking about Battlefront and how the um, the different planets had different weather and, like, the snow and stuff like that. And Rex said that weather got an upgrade this year, but it's not to where they want it yet. But you well, they can want look full at, dynamic. They want full dynamic. Right, full plus. dynamic where it changes throughout the game. And you see – a lot of the weather effects like in battlefront where the snow is kind of blowing and you get the footprints in it like that kind of stuff was made on a game that's not a sports game but now they can take that kind of code and put it in the madden because that technology has already been created and if they create something new with some kind of new type of physic or anything like that madden can borrow that or live can borrow that nhl can borrow it now it's just this huge ecosystem of designers all working on the same engine that can now easily share back and forth or like you said if there's a bug that they find it might be a bug that's inherent to the engine that now all of the developers can all work together and solve it much more quickly um so it's it's basically it's going to allow all games but mostly the sports games who are new to it to develop wider maybe like as a you know wider and and fuller just get a more deeper game instead of kind of being like ignite i kind of feel like was down this this singular path it was a two-lane road and now with with frostbite it's more like a four-lane highway on or or eight lane highway four lanes going each way and they've got so much more that they can do with it it's going to allow them to grow quicker and 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 more expansive exactly and i think this is the first year that you can fairly be in a fair way a kind of compare madden to fifa as far as like how good the game is it's the first year that you're actually able to make that comparison fifa started with such a head start on rex and clint when they got there that i don't think that that comparison has been fair well it's, and like, it's it, not it's never fair because you don't have 11 guys running set well plays no against i'm just talking other, about i'm just talking about gameplay just visually wise. like graphics just visually and, and graphics stadiums and just, We'll see the yeah, stadium think, intros and stuff this year. It'll be a lot. Oh, they look they look better. I yeah. mean, like a lot of things look better. Um, like I've seen people asking about mouthpieces, and no, there's no mouthpieces in the game. I actually spoke directly to Christian about that. I was like, I know you've seen that all year. He was like, Yeah, but like, I mean, on our priority list, you know, like mouthpieces. Okay, Not it's high. some it it's something be. that we can add eventually, but. We fix forty legacy bugs. Right. <laughs> you know what I Let's mean. Let's like, look at the good positives here. So that means forty things in gameplay that we've had problems with over the past three years, and further back than that, are fixed now. Yeah. So yeah. just think about Madden Seventeen. If they fix forty bugs in Madden Seventeen that were huge legacy issues, zone related things like that, directly to gameplay. If they just fix those 40 problems on Madden 17, you got a different game. Oh, yeah. Way different game. So now you add in the Frostbite engine with all that stuff fixed, new plays on offense, everything working differently. It, it, man, this is the I've been playing Madden since I was six years old. I am 30. This is the best version of Madden I have seen, and it hadn't even officially released yet. And it's not even close. And, you know, the, the, see, everybody's going to say, well, every, they say that every year, and then they, they patch something. I don't. Well, I will say <laughs> that I thought it last year at launch, but I also, I mean, I looked, they did a lot with franchise, you know, graphically it looks better. This is a different, this is a different saying that. This is not like, well, yeah, obviously it's the best because it's the newest and it's got the better graphics. And, you know, they no, 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 no. This is... It's so much has been fixed. So much has been improved. You know, things like Mutt Squad and, and, and Long Shot being added. I know franchise doesn't seem to have gotten a lot. I don't know what's going to happen when they come out with, I don't know if they add anything, but even without it, there's just so much in this game that it's like you said, without a doubt, hands down, it's the best. 
best football game ever made. No it's question. Not even close. It's not even close. It's not. It, it, it's I, not. So. I don't want to hear all this Axis talk or all this other unbranded talk or just update 2K5's rosters. And, and here's one thing I want to point out. I could literally upload gameplay right now of me of me sending four people and and getting three free on NBA on NFL two K five. YouTube was not around then. Yeah. YouTube came around two thousand seven, I believe. But we've already done this experiment and broken two K five. Okay. It's revisionist so, history. You know, you Exactly. It's at the time this game was good. I actually played two K five at the same time that Madden 05 was out. Madden 05 was a down year for Madden. I'm not going to lie. I thought it was That's good. That was my favorite I, Madden. But Really? I thought 04 was better than 05 by a long shot. But I didn't it, like 04 it, just because Vic, you could run around like crazy with him. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> I see, but, and this is the thing. is It depends on what you're looking at and how you how you grade the game. So but Then again, I was a lot younger then too, man. Like, sure, and, you know, I, I, was, younger, just, yeah. I was just having fun. Like, if I went and played that right now, I'd probably, it'd probably drive me nuts. Yeah. It's, like you know, I wasn't that. I wasn't as good back then. Some people like, are gonna like seventeen better just because a lot of things are easier. They can they can do okay. meta. The, you know that that's gonna be that's gonna be a risk for some guys. I don't think my audience necessarily, but there's going to be a lot of people that are. I heard somebody say it at EA Play that they didn't like it because it felt a little bit slower and it was it was it was definitely harder. But it felt slower, oh, slower? like you could well you couldn't run around with your probably you couldn't run around with your linebacker and cover three routes and... oh that's probably what they're talking they must right. have been talking about that right it wasn't slower if you ran with a user in one direction or if you turned to the left or to the right it was when you tried to turn all the way around right. like i didn't notice it significantly slower i don't know if i noticed that a whole lot no but i didn't feel slower it was different to him it was harder to him and he was like man i don't know if i like this maybe i gotta get used to it but there's gonna be a lot of people like that this year they're gonna say it's changed it's too hard and, and this and that, and that's why what you said, I think about the videos and stuff like that. Skills trainer, I don't know if they've done anything to skills trainer. It's going to be really important with blogs and videos and, you know, to get out there and explain these things to people and help them learn real football and real concepts and what these things do so that everybody can enjoy the game. Because like, you know, like we've been saying since the beginning of this podcast, it's by far, it's the best Madden that's ever been made. It's the best football game that's ever been made. None of these games that are coming out are going to be anywhere close. You know, these startup games, like you said, Axis has been in development for a couple of years, and it's probably 10 years away from Madden right now. The yeah, new college football it's... game, you know, the new college football game they're trying to get off the ground, it's going to take them, look how long it's taken Axis, it's going to take them five years to get a Yeah, but if, if, the, if, if NCAA allowed a license back, EA would immediately oh, be ahead sure. of everybody because they already have the foundation. Right. So, I mean, it's just like... I don't feel like after playing NCAA from EA and having all the teams and all this other stuff that was in NC because I used to I actually at one point liked NCAA better than Madden. I did too. I used to always play NCAA more. Um, I didn't because the tournaments were mad. Right. But as far as just playing with my friends or sitting at home just playing just to play, NCAA to me was a better game. Yeah. And the amount of things that they're not going to be able to do without licensing, like, I don't... That's, whole, that's a whole different show, but, you know... Yeah, I understand. It's just... It's just... Seeing Madden this year just shows... And we, we didn't want to talk about it. I don't want to get on it, but NBA Live. The oh Frostbite Engine... The Frostbite Engine has opened up so many possibilities for sports games now with physics and the things they're able to do that we're going to see, I think, a whole new revolution of EA sports games. Oh, and yeah, because here was my thought going out there. I was like, when I looked at the lines and I was like, why is live right next to Madden? Because right. to me, I was like, first off, I, have, I don't like the way 2K has went the past couple of years. I felt like they went real arcadey. But then when I was sitting there looking at Madden and I'm playing Madden, I kept like glancing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like as I started getting intrigued. I was like, that looked really good. And they're months away. <laughs> yeah. Their you know? release was like a month later, I think, than Madden. Exactly. And not to mention, this is their comeback year. The way that game looked, I wish they, I wish they had waited to put a trailer out because I don't feel like that trailer did justice to what I saw. Yeah. I didn't play but, it, but everybody that I talked to. It, it was... It blew my mind. I was surprised. I expected it to look like crap. I'm not going to lie to you. 
And I used to love live back in the day, man. Like until 95. they started putting the dunk contests in and all that other nonsense. Yeah. When they started making it really arcadish, kind of the way 2K is starting to go now. Yeah. That's when I stopped liking it. But that had that looked like basketball to me. That looked. <laughs> it looked so good. Point but, in general is frostbites. Yeah. It's going to change the whole sports gaming landscape. Not just from EA, but in general, because it's going to push other games to have to try to keep up now. And it's going to be an exciting time. These next few years are going to be exciting to see where the games go, the improvements that they're able to make. Um, it's going to be a ton of fun. I definitely appreciate you spending this time. We, uh, we got a long podcast. Uh, got a lot of info. So hopefully anybody that was wanting to know about Madden, if you've been driving around listening, hopefully you got pretty much everything you wanted to know about Madden. For those of you that don't know you, um, it's Rally. What are what are what are the numbers? Oh, Rally eight four three eight four three. Um, Madden um, but Madden Universe is his website. Um, tell them a little bit about that. How they can find you on Twitter and stuff like that. Oh, you can find me at Madden Universe on Twitter. Um, the website MaddenUniverse.com. Um, I do ebooks. I always have um, the but one different. What do you, what are your different? Well, how do you your ebooks different from the average guy? I actually teach football concepts. Very good. <laughs> and I teach how to, I, I actually explain how to counter things. Right. Like, and that's the other thing. And and for 18, I'm going to look at doing some, some things to help sim guys too. And it won't be a, a pay-based thing for that. That'll be more of something to help the entire community, football knowledge-wise. Because what a lot of people don't realize is a lot of competitive players have a lot of football knowledge. There are a lot that don't, but there are a lot that do. Right. And it's hard. They, a lot of them get a bad rap for the wrong reasons. Ex exactly. And that's why, like, you know, last night I, I, I had to stop um, someone on the panel when they started saying, oh, the ebooks do this. One of the problems that you get with YouTube is, like, a lot of these guys will buy an ebook from one of the sites and just take a play and just show the play and not explain why it worked, how to stop it. They just want money and it, clicks. That's all they want. It, it, exactly. And I think you're going to, with the YouTube, the way ad revenue is going, I think you're going to start seeing less of that. Now it's starting to move towards the drama side, which is really aggravating. But <laughs> A whole different show altogether. But Mad oh, Universe... God. ManUniverse.com, at ManUniverse on Twitter. Definitely look him up. He's got tons of great info. He's going to be in, active in the competitive game this year. So we'll yeah, I'll be see you. Yeah, I'll be back this year. Definitely, definitely see you moving up the leaderboard. Maybe you can get a game in with them. Uh, you run across them. Might not be in the uh, best of your win-loss record, but you might learn <laughs> You might learn some things on the way. And uh, definitely, you got a YouTube channel too? Or you put your stuff on your website? Uh, yeah, Madden Universe, but because of all the nonsense that was going on, like I, I, it took me a while to deal. I don't like dealing with all the drama. Okay. <laughs> so like I'll, I'll randomly throw some up there, but I'm probably going to use it a little more this year. Just follow him on Twitter and you'll, you'll, you'll yeah. know what he's got. Yeah, you'll know when I put something up. Like I advertise it on Twitter the most. That's what I use the most. Right. All right. Well, we definitely appreciate you taking the time. It was definitely a good talk. Hopefully everybody got all your questions answered. If you didn't, uh, post them in the comments. We'll try to get them answered. You know, tweet at us on on Twitter, and you know we have relationships with the devs. We can try to find an answer for you if we if it was something we didn't cover, but uh, definitely informative, and we appreciate it. We'll be rooting for you in the competitive scene this year. Oh, I appreciate it. And even if you're sim, don't don't be afraid to ask me a question, like directly. Even if it's something you don't understand about my side of things or things like that, I think all of us coming together as a community is what needs to start to happen. Absolutely. Um, and don't be afraid to ask me a question on, on you know, like if you're a sim player and you, you want to play on the online leaderboards and you're seeing something happen to you a lot or something like that, don't be afraid to ask me how to stop it. It can also be something like, that can uh, help your league too because you find something you can tell everybody in your league and then now it's not an issue. Yeah, exactly. So just just throwing that out there. like cause... <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate it again. We'll touch base definitely uh, as we keep going along in the Madden season. You guys have a good one. Thank you for listening to another episode of the PX1 Sports Radio Podcast. For more, you can find us on Twitter at PX1 Sports or online at px1sports.com. Thank you for listening, and we will see you next time.